How's it going everyone? Data here and welcome back to the Columbus Blue Jackets franchise mode, the final installment of our final series here on NHL 21 with NHL 22 just a few days away now. We unfortunately have to simulate all the way to year 25 after playing only six seasons with Columbus, 18 full episodes. It was a couple months of content. We knew it would be a bit of a shorter series. We've built ourselves a dynasty here in Columbus. We know they can do it and we're looking forward to seeing what this team can do once we have set the foundation through these first six seasons and with still another 19 to go. So through this episode, I'm just going to quickly give you the rundown. Every season, you're going to see a quick little black screen. I'll tell you what year it is. I'm going to bring you through the lines of the team. Any changes that were made in the off season will be addressed. Then we're going to jump to the end of season, show you the team stats. Then we're going to show you the player stats, the playoff tree, if we made the playoffs, the playoff stats, and hopefully a Stanley Cup celebration, as well as any other big pieces of news, big players retiring, the contract negotiations that fell apart, they had to go to free agency, and then any big draft pick selections that we made. If we do any big signings in free agency, they will be highlighted in the next season when we start the lines of that next season. So the injuries will be turned off, the scouting will be set to auto, both pro and amateur scouting, but we'll still get a good look at the league for whenever uh, if a trade is necessary with the auto scouting turned on so although you're seeing it quite quickly I'm not just putting everything in the hands of the uh, AI general manager I'm still doing this very hands-on with the team that we have built I'm still gonna be doing contract negotiations looking at free agency making a trade or two maybe in the season if it is deemed necessary because the team seems to be falling apart aside from that everything else is auto and injuries are off because I need to get through 19 seasons in like three days of filming but it is still the team that we have built and the credit still goes to us for any and all success so giving you just a quick rundown of this organization before we head into year number seven i won't even show you the off season i'm going to go through it myself and then we'll begin at year number seven remember that at this moment we may even have more growth than this but at this moment we are coming off of a seven game thriller if you came by the two hour plus live stream the other night where we had our last playoff run. Oh, what a dominant team we were. We swept through round number one against the Bruins. We swept through round number two against the 50-win New York Rangers, but we dropped in seven to the eventual Stanley Cup champion, uh, Tampa Bay Lightning. It was the third conference finals that we made in four years. It was the furthest we ever made going all the way to game seven. And it was, what, the fourth time in six years that we lost in the playoffs to the eventual Stanley Yeah, every time we made the playoffs, four times out of the six seasons, we lost to the eventual Stanley Cup champion. So it's been a lot of bad luck here in Columbus because we've had an amazing team. In the player stats, we had a great time in the playoffs there. Felipe Sanderson, and by the way, I would encourage you to definitely check out that video if you didn't already. Sanderson, Klesla, Line, all point per game or better. The captain, Sam Reinhardt, performed. Hervinen, Hannafin, Hughes, Hyman. Unfortunately, Yusei Saros got injured with a concussion. Your, uh, Jonas Corpisalo came in, went 1, 2, and 0 oh, with an 845 save percentage. It was really that game 7, letting in 8 goals on like 30 shots and... It was very disappointing, but I digress. He's probably not coming back next season and uh, moving to the organizational breakdown here over in the contract screen. We do have our franchise sniper, Vaklav Klesla, a.k.a. Vaklav Klutchla, 95 overall. He's only 19 years of age, 99 offensive awareness. I'm going to try to sign him to extension right on July 1st to a bridge deal or a big deal. I'm not sure what because he's already a 95 overall. Yuka Hervinen, after this season, so 1, 2, 3, 4, five six six more years after this one at 8.675 great contract for him Felipe Sanderson he is signed for two more years after this at 7.6 uh in the first overall pick in 2021 from the Rangers we acquired him uh Felipe Sanderson the fourth overall pick in 2022 he was our selection Noah Hannafin coming off of a James Norris trophy He's signed for five more years at 12.25 and may become impossible at some point to keep him. We'll do his, uh, our best. Patrick Line, 90 overall, coming off of a career season. Six more years at 7.625. Love it. Philip Eudes, the second overall pick right after Klesla in 2024. Five-star shooting and everything. Power forward, first line center. 89 overall. He's going to be on his last year as well. Adam Boquist, 88 overall. One year removed from a James Norris of his own. Seven more years at just over six million dollars at a 90 88 90 overall. That's great uh, Ryan Lindgren. He has an extension coming in 5.25 million for one two three four five six more years So that's gonna be great. He's been a huge part of our team 
The captain, Sam Reinhardt, he has three more years at 7.775, now transitioning into our second line center. Rasmus Sandin, he has one more year at 4.645. It'll be tough to keep him, but we'll try our best. Oliver Bjorkstrand likely going to free agency. We do have a lot of money in this next season. As you can see, $19 million of extension. So I'd be down to sign a big free agency name for a one-year deal to play third line center, perhaps, because Durapost is probably getting promoted to the third line, as we'll see in a moment. But Bjorkstrand will most likely walk. Zach Hyman, 85 overall. He has one more year at 3.15. Third line, likely Hyman, uh, Durapost, and a third line center. Michael Oliver, 84 overall grinder. He signed for two more years at 2.725. John Tavares, likely going to free agency. The experiment was good, but didn't work out in the end, ultimately, unfortunately. But it was a good signing for our third line center. I'd probably like someone better as he's going to continue to go down with his uh, overall his potential. Libor Hayek, fantastic year, plus 25. Two more years at 3.125. Matt Grizzlick, we're going to have to re-sign him after a career year. Love that. He's wanting in the $3 million range. I'll work that out. Boone Jenner, our fourth line center, who we brought back to the team. We're definitely going to be trying to keep him as well. Jacob Perrault, he had a career best, a season, a career best in his second season here. And in the playoffs, he was amazing as well, as he really showed up. Seven points in 15 games. Um, Dumoulin likely going to walk. Ginning likely going to walk or just be in uh, the AHL. Then moving to the AHL, we got uh, the real names really, just Jaden Durapos, our 26th overall pick in 2021 with five-star shooting. He's going to probably be on the third line next season. Aside from that, we don't really have much in the system. Viacola maybe going to be pushing for the NHL sometime soon. Tracy, perhaps. Lane McLean, one of our better prospects as well, as he is still unsigned. And some of these other guys with still some potential in there for sure. And then going to the goalies, uh, it's probably going to be Corpy, uh, sorry, um, Saros, if we can get him signed. He's going to be wanting, yeah, we can probably go Saros, backed up by 82 overall Daniil Tarasov. Rodrigue and Kopstols will probably continue in the AHL together. Medium lead by Barry, Brent. Brent Kopstols, our fourth round pick in 2022. He will probably be our starting goalie of the future future. Cross and Brunstrom could also have that role as they are sixth and... 6th and 5th round picks, respectively. So there's a quick breakdown of the organization. You'll probably be seeing these names moving in and out over the next few years. We'll keep note of our created players and big names that we've traded away when they retire and stuff like that. What did they do in their careers? And then all the way at the end of the video, as I'm sure many of you are curious about, we're going to go over all kinds of stuff. The all-time record of the team, who the top scorers all-time were. Luckily, the record book keeps track of that for us. All the awards that we've won through 25 years. The Stanley Cups, the President's Trophy the conference titles etc so that's going to be a very fun time as well i love looking at those stats and i'm sure you'll get a kick out of it as well Dude, let's get started moving into year number seven 19 seasons to do i don't want this video to be two hours long so i'd like to try and keep each season to maybe three or four minutes or less i know that'll be tough but i promise i will try my best let's have a fun time here my friends we built this team i know we don't get to see it slowly slowly through four episodes per season but nonetheless, this is just an accelerated version of the next 19 seasons. We built this team. We were responsible for its success. The mandate for us was to keep the stars, keep the talent. We did end up trading away Seth Jones and Zach Wierenski over time, but we kept Patrick Line. We brought in new talent. We spent the money. We drafted well, and now we're going to get to enjoy those benefits as those players come into their own now. So without further ado, I will take care of this 2026 offseason, and I will see you for the beginning of year number number seven. So headed into year number seven, we are going all in. First line, Vaklav Klasla had a 95 overall. We got extensions for him and Yudes that I'll touch upon in a moment. Yudes 89 overall, Sanderson 92 with a plus three, possibly the best line in the NHL. Second line remains the same. The entire top six remains the same, really. Line A, Reinhardt, and Yuka Hervinen up to a 92 overall. Third line, here's where we spent some money. Philip Dano in free agency. He was coming off of a 60-point season with Winnipeg. He has five-star defense, 92 face-offs. It's going to be huge for the penalty kill, an area in which we weren't amazing. Good, but not amazing last season. One year, 6.75 million. We still have 6 million left over. Jaden Durapost up to an 80 overall. He's going to be having his rookie season. He has 99 shooting accuracy, five stars there. 93 defensive awareness, 95 acceleration, 75 speed. He's a wonky prospect, but hopefully he does well with Dano and Zach Hyman also in his last year. 
fourth line, Jacob Perrault, Boone Jenner, and Michael Oliver. I'd like to put Boone Jenner instead of John Tavares because he is a veteran player uh, on this team that is poise player despite you know good face-offs and poise from Johnny T as well and the player type too him being able to be a power forward on the uh, penalty kill with good face-offs is helpful but if he's not playing well Johnny T I did I was gonna let him go but he was down to sign one year 1.85 so he will stay as not depth because there's no injuries but just if there's a switch that gets made Hannafin Boquist first paired plus three Sandine Lindgren plus one Sandine probably on his last year here I don't think we'll have money to re-sign him Hayek and Grizzlick. Other free agency move in the goaltending category. Michael DiPietro, 85 overall, hasn't played many games, but has good numbers when he has played in the NHL. 9 5 and 5 in this last season. One shutout, 924 save percentage, 2.47 goals against average with Vancouver. So he wanted two years, 2.65 million. Meanwhile, guys like Saros ended up going up in their demands. I got him for one year, 3.75. So Saros will be a very good backup. Corpy Salo off to Calgary. Tarasov off to Florida. Both of them gone. They didn't play well in the season or the playoffs. Tarasov, I know he didn't play in the playoffs, but not good enough I, uh, just for a team that needs to go to a Stanley Cup this year. Di Pietro will be our starter, backed up by Saros. Let's get this season done and see how we look at the end of 2026-27. And also with Oliver Bjorkstrand now gone, he was just released to free agency. We're going to give the other alternate captaincy to Boone Jenner, our former captain. Also about those extensions for Klesla and Eudes, both getting signed to five-year deals that bring them to the end of 2032. It'll be tough to try and keep the band together, but we will do the best we can. Let's go all out here in year number seven. Whew, if you thought year number six was good, buckle up for year number seven, as we once again set a franchise record for wins, points, records, everything. Winning the, the Eastern Conference, we've already done that. Now we've won the President's Trophy with a record of 61, 17, and 4, beating out the Maple Leafs by one win. It wasn't a record in goals four per game, as we had 4.23 last season, but we finally got down to under three goals against per game, and furthermore, 2.73 goals against per game. Very, very helpful, and that's what got us the President's Trophy. Last year we won the division in the conference, but this year we went all the way to the top. Power play once again at over 30% at 30.2, best in the NHL. And penalty kill, 83.8, better than the 80.2, I think, last year. So second best in the NHL. So really, really good team, uh, good season for the special teams. When it came down to the scoring, Philip Eudes and Felipe Sanderson tied with 92 points each in 82 games. Felipe Sanderson tied his franchise record that he already set last season of 67 assists once again getting 67 assists in one season. 25 goals for him, 42 for Philip Hughes. Vaclav Klesla Klutchla scored 42 goals, 49 assists, and 91 points in 82 games. Hervinen scored 47 goals and 90 points in 82 games. Imagine getting that much and being the fourth highest scorer on your team. And Patrick Laine also over a point per game at 83 points in 82 games. A real resurgence in the last couple of seasons here. Again, imagine doing that and being fifth in scoring on your team. Noah Hannafin, another Norris caliber season with 69 points and a plus 47 on the season. Sam Reinhardt still got it, 67 points plus 40. Bocas 56, Sandine 54, Michael Oliver 32 goals and 38 points. Philip Dano on that third line, 35 points for him. Good third line role. Jaden Durapost, 20 goals, 34 points. Jacques Perrault, new career high here in his third NHL season. Really getting good numbers now at 34 points from him. Despite only playing 9.07 per night, I'd like to get him into a third line role, perhaps even over Jaden Durapost. Zach Hyman, 27 and 82. Boone Jenner, also 27. Ryan Lingen, 25 points and a plus 37. Grizzlick, 11 points and a plus 9. Hayek, 7 and a plus 7. Focusing a bit more on the points this season, as we know all these players in years 20 or whatever, we may not know the entire team, so I won't go through every single player, but we're really focused on it this year. Michael DiPietro, as our starter, went 45, 13, and 3 with 5 shutouts, a 9 10 save percentage, and 2.58 goals against average. Really good numbers in a league where it's having, where the goalies have been having a tough time. Saros' record was good, numbers not so good, but 16, 6, and 1, 2 shutouts, 8 98 save percentage, and 2.98 goals against average. 
Pausing here just to take a moment to say what a run this has been. Round number one against Montreal Canadiens, we won in five games. Little hiccup in game one, then smooth sailing from there, a couple overtime wins. Round number two, we almost lose to the Rangers, losing overtime of game five, then we win games six and seven to move on to the Eastern Conference Finals against the 60-win Toronto Maple Leafs. We sweep them out of the Eastern Conference Finals, and for the first time in franchise history, we move to the Stanley Cup Finals. After reaching the Conference Finals for three times in four years, we do it four times in five years and fourth time's a charm as we go to the Stanley Cup Finals against the Minnesota Wilds, who had quite a run on the way here as well, going 12-3. and three. So we win game one, 7 nothing. We lose game two, 4-3 in overtime. I'm doing a live reaction right here. Game number three, we win 6-3. to three. Game number four now, we lose 6-2. to two. It's all tied up. It's a best of three now. We lose 5-3. to three. We're down 3-2 in the Stanley Cup Finals against the Minnesota Wilds. We've never been closer. We need to win right here to push it to seven in dramatic fashion. First period, 3-1. Lindgren, Eudes, and Hyman against Connor Garland's one. Second period, 6-1. Nice. That's all we should need. Grizzly, Klesla, and Hervinen up by five in the third period. Connor Brown cuts the lead to four, but still quite an extensive lead here for the Blue Jackets. And again, years number seven, eight, nine, we might go a bit slower through them, including this, this slow sim look. After that, we'll pick up the speed to try and finish this video ASAP. 6-2 victory. Huge clutch performances. We push this series to seven, my friends. Year number seven. Game seven of the Stanley Cup Finals. We fought so hard and so long. This team deserves it. We've built it from the ground up. Sam Reinhardt, Boone Jenner, Patrick Laine. We finally maybe solved the goal thing a little bit. Let's do it here in game seven. We're going to watch the full game on slow sim. Marco Rossi opens up the scoring on the power play. 1-0 Wild, but Boone Jenner. There's the veteran poise. Fourth line center with the A on his chest. Gets one past Capo Kakinen on the biggest game of his team's fr his, his career and his team's franchise history as well. Getting it done at home. If there's anyone to score, it's Boone Jenner. In what, his 13th season now with the team? Second period, it's a 1-1 game. Power play for the Minnesota Wild. We kill that off, outshooting them 18-10 to at the moment. And Felipe Sanderson on the power play. The best power play in the NHL puts us up 2-1 to one now, halfway through the second period. The special teams could be what saves us. Great goaltending from Capo Kakinen, but we got two past him so far. Heading into the third period, 27-13 to 13 are the shots. We are 20 minutes away from the first Stanley Cup in this franchise's history in the year 2027. Oh my goodness. Mason Shaw ties it up early. 2-2 game. And we got, it's going to come down to whoever can get the next one and then hang on tight or add to it. Next goal is a ginormous one. 10 minutes to go here in the third period. I'm getting extremely nervous here. Five minutes left. Down to times four speed. Four minutes to go. Out shooting Minnesota 35 to 20. Just two minutes left. We're going to hop in with one minute to go. And now it's the time. At Nationwide Arena, 56 seconds to go in the third period. 2 2 game. Game seven of the Stanley Cup Finals. Kyle Woods out there on the wild Next goal. May very be the Stanley Cup winning goal. My goodness, seven years and it all comes down to this. Defensive zone face off once again now. Rossi wins it back to Wood. To Verana, one timer. No! Matthew Boldy. One timer with 10 seconds left. And that may just be the goal that wins the Wild the Stanley Cup with 12.8 seconds to go from Verana and then Kyle Wood. Goalie getting pulled. Yuka Hervinen. It's not over. Get in there, Hervinen, Reinhardt, five seconds, Boquist, Hervinen, rip, oh, just wide, line A again, one more, no, oh, every year we get just a little further, just a little further every year, oh, conference finals losing six, conference finals losing seven, conference finals sweep in four and go to the Stanley Cup finals, to lose in seven. Game seven Stanley Cup final. What are the guys like Sam Reinhardt feeling right now? 
Big year for Minnesota as they won the Stanley Cup and the Iowa Wild won the Calder Cup. They swept the first round. They won in six in the third in the second round. Won in five in the conference finals. Then Stanley Cup finals in seven. A very deserved win, but 61 wins from us. Five games in round one, seven in round two. Sweep the conference finals and lose in seven. That's just so brutal. What a season again, postseason for the points here. Hervinen, Line, Reinhardt, all over a point per game. Her Line even, 16 goals. Sanderson, 22. Hughes, 21. Kalasla, I needed maybe more from him, only 8 goals. Boquist and Hannafin did great. Dano, 13 points in 23 games, amazing. Hyman, Sandin, Grizzlick, Durapos, Lindgren. Oh, boy. And Mikey DiPietro, 15, 6, and 2. One shot out, 9, 11 save percentage, 2.70 goals against average. Awards in year number 7. Wild won the Cup, we win the President's Trophy. After the Wild won the President's Trophy last season, so they've been waiting for their Stanley Cup as well. They haven't won one yet. Amirov wins the Art Ross and the Hart. Hannafin wins the James Norris in back-to-back -back seasons. Three years in a row that it goes to a Blue Jacket. Lady Bing to Amirov as well. Happy Bull and Calder. Rossi, Con Smythe. Vezina to Mikey LaForge. Jennings goes to Di Pietro and Saros. I like that. Masterton to Zadarov. Jack Adams, coach of the Caps. The Ryan O'Reilly Award, finally, finally going back to Ryan O'Reilly for the first time since 2023. Ted Lindsay Amirov, Morris Richard Amirov. What a year for him. The last thing I want to see is, what did Marco Rossi do to win the call, the um, the Conn Smythe for uh, the playoffs there? He scored 25 points in 22 games. Yeah, I don't think I agree on that. Kakinen went 14-5-1. Not even the greatest numbers either. We should have had this, boys. So I'm going to have to deal with all the jujitsu and everything else in this offseason. I'm going to run through it, and we'll get to year number eight. We'll start picking up the speed on these seasons, and I'll see you to begin the... Uh, see you at the roster and the edit line screen to begin year number eight. Also in the 2027 offseason, Sidney Crosby retiring 1,744 points in 1,457 games. Whole career with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Ended off in the AHL as well, so a little bit of disrespect to Sid the Kid, but what a career for him. Year number eight, and I gotta say I'm pretty impressed with this lineup on a very, very tight cap. Line number one, Klasla up to a 96 overall with high franchise potential. Hughes, Sanderson, get the plus three. Crazy, crazy overalls. 95, 91, excuse me, 92, and 99. Second line, Hervinen up to a 92 overall with Reinhardt and Line with a plus one. Third line, it's the youth movement. Jacob Perrault at an 82 overall getting third line minutes for the first time in his career. He's done well in the fourth line. Lane McLean making his NHL debut, our 18th overall pick in 2024. Power forward at 79 overall. And Jaden Durapost up to an 81 with those 99s in the shooting category. Fourth line, Boone Jenner is back for one more season at a 79 overall, 1.6 million. Philip Dano re-signed for one year at 2.150, so he'll play fourth line center with penalty kill time. And Michael Oliver at an 85 overall, likely his last season as well, as he'll be wanting about 4 million when it comes to next season's renewal. Defense, Hannafin, Hannafin Boquist, Lindgren, and Vili Hinola, a free agent acquisition, 82 overall, signed for one year, 2 million to replace Rasmus Sandin, who wanted about 8 million. We could not do it, unfortunately, so we had to let him just walk in free agency after such a good year last year. And then Hayek and Grizzlick still on that third pair. Special teams, since Hinola is here as another uh, offensive defense, and we get a plus 5 on that first unit, that could be huge. Penalty kill with a uh, zero and a plus one. Goaltending, Di Pietro backed up by Saros, also in the last year of his deal. Likely not going to be resigning because he wants six, seven million. Rodrigue, third goalie. And with less than probably about a million dollars to spare, this is a team we have created for year number eight when we're looking to push for a Stanley Cup after losing in seven in year number seven. And if you thought year number seven was good, hang on, because in year number eight, it is another new franchise record in wins as the Columbus Blue Jackets go 62, 17, and 3, 127 points to win back-to-back -back President's Trophies, just miles ahead of the Minnesota Wild in second place, the, the Stanley Cup winners from last season, of course. We went 4.29 goals for per game, more than two seasons ago when we had 4.23, just scoring left and right at an insane rate, and goals against at 2.55 per game, the best in the NHL, best offensive and defensive team in the NHL, power play at a 
third. One in every three power plays resulting in a goal. Winnipeg Jets actually at 35% had the best in the league, but I'm not going to be upset with 33.3% from us. Our penalty kill at 83.7%, best in the NHL. Now going to the points. There's going to be a lot of points to go over as we had one, two, three, four, five, six players above a point per game. Philip Eudes, 48 goals and 101 points. New career record for him. I think it's a new franchise record for the Blue Jackets as well. Felipe Sanderson crushing the all-time franchise record of 67 assists as he gets 77, 96-point season from him. New uh, career record for him in all those categories as well. Not for goals, but assists and points. Vaclav Klutschla, Klutschla Klesla, 93 points, 41 goals, 52 assists, new career high in points. Yuka Hervinen, 51 goals and 88 points new career high in goals career highs left and right Patrick Laine age of 29 still getting an 88 point season new career high for him as well that top six is just insane Sam Reinhardt at the age of 32 going above a point per game for the first time since his first yeah since 2020-21 so just crazy numbers from him. New career high in assists at 69 as well. Adam Boquist back to his Norris form. 76 point season for him. It could very well go Boquist, Hannafin, Hannafin, Boquist for the last four years of Norris trophies. Speaking of Noah Hannafin, 64 point season from him. Jaden Durpost, 32 goals and 48 points. New career highs in both categories in his sophomore season. Jacob Perrault getting third line minutes now. Great to see him really excel. 42 point season for him. 128 points in 328 career games, but this year obviously his best in goals and assists. Don't know if he can come back next season with the contract that he'll be asking for. Philip Dano, 32. Lane McLean in his rookie season, 30 points in 82 games. Michael Oliver, 18 goals, 28 points. Lindgren, 28 points and a plus 42. Boone Jenner at the age of 34 puts up 27 points. Ville Hinola, 24 points and a plus 28 in his first season with us. Matt Grizzlick, 20 points, plus 28. The plus minuses were off the charts. Libor Hayek, 7 points, plus 25. Also a player who may not be coming back next season. Mikey DiPietro went 45, 12, and 3 with 3 shutouts, 9, 12 save percentage, 2.46 goals against average. That's Vezina caliber right there. Yusei Saros backing him up, went 17, 6, and 0 with 1 shutout. 19, 9, 13 save percentage and 2.51 goals against average. Year number eight, franchise record 62 wins. All those players above a, a point per game. Let's do it in the year number eight playoffs and capture this franchise's first Stanley Cup. Ladies and gentlemen, in the 2028 playoffs, we go down 2 0 in round number one to the Leafs, then win four in a row to take it in six. We take down the Flyers in five. We take down the Panthers in the Eastern Conference Finals in five. And in the Stanley Cup Finals against the Dallas Stars, who took down the Western champion Minnesota Wild in round number one, Predators in five, Canucks in six, are now about to possibly be swept by the Blue Jackets. Class <laughs> last 32 points in 19 games at the American Airlines Center in Dallas. Can we sweep out the Stars? We just need one win in the next four games to capture our first Stanley Cup. What a dominant season and dominant playoffs. Just destroying our competition left and right. First period. Hervinen opens it up on Coconut Hobbs. Gallagher and Rantanen score one apiece on DiPietro. Second period, no scoring. Shots 26-18 for Dallas. We'll be going, be going back home for game five. Hold on. There's the captain, Sam Reinhardt, who says we need this cup in Dallas. Don't give them another chance. Ten minutes to go. Hironic will uh, restore the one goal lead for Dallas. Will we be able to tie this one up with just five minutes to go? Or will it be Dallas pushing? Yes, power play goal for Dallas. No sweep, it doesn't look like. Hold on, late power play for the Blue Jackets. No, no sweep for the Blue Jackets as the Dallas Stars take it in game four. But that just means that we're going back home to Nationwide Arena with a chance to win it at home in front of the fans who have been waiting all the way since the 2000-2001 season for this moment. Almost three decades later, 2028 game five Stanley Cup finals let's do it first period 2-1 jacket Sagan opens it up with then Noah Hannafin and free agent acquisition Ville Hinola giving us the 2-1 lead two goals on five shots against Coconut Hobbs one on 12 against Mikey DiPietro second period 4-1 Sam Reinhardt the captain showing up in the biggest game now of his career 32 years of age carrying this team all the way since year number one 
Michael Oliver with 32 seconds to go, a huge fourth goal to make our lead three to uh, three goals over the Dallas Stars now. My my brain is absolutely fried. We're out shooting them. We're being outshot 23 to 20, but we're up by three. Four one is the score. Game five at home, extending it could just be the final. Oh my goodness, the final nail in the coffin. Michael Oliver second of the night. 5-1 Blue Jackets power play is killed off by Dallas. They're fighting hard. They're getting shots on net, but up by four with under five to go. I don't know if Dallas can do it. Final few minutes now, and let's hop in. 42 seconds to go. Just take these moments to soak it in, my friends. After all the heartache, those these like 20 episodes, Sam Reinhardt, the captain, 32 years of age, Patrick Laine, all came over here in the Pierre-Luc Dubois trade. We kept him. A lot of people calling to trade him. We ended up trading Jones, Wierenski. We made the right moves over the years. Bokwitz was a huge piece. Hannafin, a humongous huge uh, free agent. While well, we traded for his rights and signed him before he hit free agency. Yuka Hervin, a great trade in the Kubalik move. Thank you to all the assistant GMs that have helped to make this happen with all your suggestions. Eight years down the road, Boone Jenner playing almost his entire career with this team. Klesla, Eudes, Sanderson drafted from the bottom, moving first round picks, moving pieces like Justin Falk to get the first and second overall pick. It was not easy, it cost us a lot, but we went all in and it's all worth it because in year number eight, with just five seconds to go, one last chance for another one, the Columbus Blue Jackets are your 2028 Stanley Cup champions. What a year, what a good little mix. Not quite the same mix of veteran poise, but Boone Jenner down there. Some rookie presence with Lane McLean. Second season from Durpost, fourth or fifth season from Perrault. A lot of youth out there but just such strong voices in that locker room. Ryan Lindgren and Libor Hayek, who came from the Rangers and fought their hardest ever since. The youth firepower within the top six. J Mikey DiPietro signed a two-year contract in year one, brings the team to the game seven of the Stanley Cup Finals. In game two, helps them to clinch it. Yusei Saros, a strong, strong backup role. This team just checked all of the boxes, scoring over four and a quarter goals per game and letting in just about two and a half per game. Stanley Cup champions, my friends, and it feels just so sweet. Hannafin with some gray hair, I think, actually, getting into his 30s now. Nice going through the handshake line here. Wow, just looking at these faces, looking at those Stanley Cup patches on those jerseys. I think the Conn Smythe has to go to uh, Vaclav Klesla. I was looking at the point totals there. And uh, yeah, there it is. There's the dome. Vaklav Klutschla getting it. And his final stats here. 16 goals, 17 assists for 33 points. Big handshake with Gary. Big smiles right there. Looking good. Con Smythe and well-deserved from the first overall pick franchise forward. I'll throw it over to Gary. Well, hello, Columbus! The fans of Columbus have been waiting so long. Almost three decades Congratulations to General Manager Data and his team who have put together such a fantastic franchise over these last few years. After all the pain, Sam Reinhardt, eight years, I'm calling you over to come and get the moment you've been waiting for. Come raise the Stanley Cup. Gary, big handshake, hands it over to Sam. The C on his chest from year one to eight. The captain in front of the fans raises the Stanley Cup. Stanley Cup champion Sam Reinhardt. What a great ring to it. Coming from Buffalo. Who's going to hand it off to first? 25. Is that uh, Hayek 25? Uh, yes. Libor Hayek raising it next. Number 25. Coming over, like I said, in that Ryan Lindgren deal. Look at Gary back there just watching with a big smile on his face. And next to take it with that gray hair. It's Lane McLean, actually. The rookie in his first season. Wow, what a he moves right into that third line role, slotted right in. Philip Deno signed back on for one year. He gets his Stanley Cup. I'm sad that so many players couldn't get it, but we, you know, we had the core. We re retooled a little bit in the off season, and it looks like the moves paid off. And five games Stanley Cup final, we take it home of the fifth line. He's gonna pass it over now to Mikey DiPietro. He was the right goalie to get in free agency. He was the guy to carry us. Saros moving him into a backup role was the right move. And he lifts the Stanley Cup. Probably not gonna be able to come back next season because of the money that he'll want. But nonetheless, he got us there. Let's just think about the good times now. Ladies and gentlemen, get out your cameras, get out your phones, take a screenshot, snap a picture. It'll last a lifetime.
What a journey. What a journey. 2028 Stanley Cup champion, Columbus Blue Jackets take down Dallas in five games. Looking at the playoff scoring now, Vaclav Klesla definitely deserved that con Smythe with 33 points in 21 games. We had one, two, three, four players above a point per game. Sam Reinhardt, two goals and 20 assists. Sanderson, three goals and 25 assists. Call these guys just the dish men. I don't know what. Klesla 16 and 17, Hughes 14 and 8. Patrick Line goes 10 and 10 for 20 points in 21 games, now at the age of 30. Yuka Hervin in 19 points. Adam Boquist 17. Hannafin 16, that top pair right there, the best top two in the NHL. Durpo, 6 goals, 11 points. Michael Oliver, 10 goals in 21 games. Ville Hinola, 10 points and a plus 4. Lindgren, 7. Perrault, 6. Grizzly, 6 and a plus 12. Philippe Dano, signed back on for one year and he gets his Stanley Cup. Love having him on the Stanley Cup winning team. Boone Jenner gets his Stanley Cup after spending all those years with us. After what, like 14 seasons, 13 seasons? Five points and a plus two in those 21 games. Rookie Lane McLean, five points. Hayek, three assists, plus nine. Mikey DiPietro went 16, five, and zero oh with one shutout. 918 save percentage, 2.48 goals against average. Saros made one save on one shot in seven minutes of play. So there you go, and got credited with a loss, but... He has a Stanley Cup ring, so I don't think he's too worried about it. It's going to be a difficult offseason for us as we have $17.2 million in extension, but we have big names who want contracts such as Felipe Sanderson. We could go in the six-year range at 14.725 to 85%. That would take up most of the cap. And then we still have to think about our depth in Oliver, Dano, Hayek, Hainola. They're going to be wanting big deals. So it's not going to be easy. I'll try my best to balance it. Sanderson will definitely be getting re-signed, but that'll come at a cost for the rest of the lineup. Hopefully our youth is ready to move into the lineup from the AHL, those top guys we were talking about earlier. Goaltending will also be an issue as DiPietro is not going to probably come back. He wants $7 million, so we'll have to let him walk as well. Uh, in theory, maybe we get Sanderson for close to 10. No, I don't think that would be able to work. Maybe we get DiPietro and Sanderson if we really stretch it, but then, then we lose all of our depth down here. So I think at least one of them have to walk, and we don't want to let Sanderson walk. So I'll deal with all that in the offseason. But hey, just to note, Stanley Cup champions Columbus Blue Jackets call their cup champions Cleveland Monsters. So after Minnesota did it last year, the Stanley Cup and the Calder Cup, we do it in 2028. Love to see that. Let's get a quick look at the awards in this season. Great to see that we have some youth coming up in the system too. Stanley Cup from Columbus. President's Trophy for two straight seasons. This time, no President's Trophy curse. Individual awards, Philip Hughes, the Art Ross, and the Hart. Love it. James Norris to Boquist, exactly what I thought. Boquist, Hannafin, Hannafin, Boquist. Lady Bing to Pedersen. Calder to Colesnick. Con Smythe to Klesla. Vezina to Di Pietro. Nice. Jennings once again going to Di Pietro and Saros. Masterton to McIsaac. Jack Adams to the coach of the Canadians. The Ryan O'Reilly Award going to Kunin. Ted Lindsay to Philip Eudes. And Maurice Richard to Kirill Kaprizov. Also big retiring class in 2028 as Ovechkin goes out with 1,754 points, 977 goals in just over 1,700 games. He was down to a 72 overall. Patrick Kane also on the Kings. He was an 80 overall. 1,659 points in 1,628 games. Backstrom, Marshawn, Tarasenko, Couture, Eric Carlson, lots of other big names. In the draft, we traded up from 31 to 25 to draft Joachim Pitkinen. 74 overall, low elite, 18 years of age, centerman, two-way forward. Saw that his NHL ETA was one year away, so a very nice selection late in the first round where a lot of 60 overall, medium, top six, and top four D guys kind of go. So very happy with that selection. All right, year number nine on the top six continues to look the same. Klesla, Yudes, and Sanderson getting a plus three. Yudes up to a 90 overall. Second line, Hervinen, Reinhardt, and Laine. Laine up to a 91. Reinhardt an 89. Hervinen still at a 92. Third line, Durpos up to an 82. McLean up to an 81. Perrault signed a one-year contract, 3.25. Likely going to be his last season after this one, though. I keep saying that, but then they sign on for one more. Just like Michael Oliver, who signed on for one more at 2.85. Green and Bannister. Bad line chemistry on the fourth line. I will keep an eye on it and fix it if need be, but hopefully the negative three doesn't have a huge impact. Green, a first-round pick from Chicago in 2022. Bannister, a first-round pick from Dallas in the same year. 
five-star shooting. Felipe Sanderson signed an eight-year extension for $11.65 million per season. A pretty big discount, I would say, from the $14, $15 million that he was asking for previously. In free agency, we went out and signed a couple defensemen. Travis Dermott, 80 overall, one-year, 900 k Gives him a plus three with Ryan Lindgren. And Josh Brook, 81 overall, one-year, 2.85. A good two-way D. Hannafin and Boquist still on the top pair with the plus three. They are 91 and 90 overall. Lindgren and Dermot getting the plus three. Grizzlick now at the age of 34, still an 81 overall on the third pair. Special teams look pretty solid with the plus three, plus one, and zero, zero on the penalty kill. Goaltending, Yusei Saros will now be our starter. Last year of his contract, this will likely be a transition season as Brent Kopstels, or Kopstels, will become our starting goaltender next season. 81 overall, and he signed an eight-year, $1.75 million extension. I know it's kind of cheese, but if he wants to sign it and the computer doesn't think he's going to grow, I'm going to put my faith in him. I'm going to think that he's going to grow, and I hope that he's going to be a steal of a contract as our elite starting goalie of the future. So, year number nine, reigning Stanley Cup champions. Let's get it. And with Boone Jenner now no longer on the team, the second alternate will be going to Noah Hannafin. Make it a three-peat of President's Trophies in year number nine as we went 56, 21, and 5 in 2028-29 to capture the President's Trophy, Eastern Conference, and Metropolitan Division ahead of the Toronto Maple Leafs, so very tight Eastern Conference. We had 4.62 goals for per game. 379 goals for over the course of 82 games on the season. We thought 4.23, 4.2, whatever else was good. 4.62 over four and a half goals per game. A bit of a worse year defensively at 2.9 goals against per game, but just crazy level of offense. Power play at 30.2, a second best for in the entire NHL. But penalty kill at 79.6 was around the middle and closer to the bottom, I feel. Around the middle, actually a little closer to the top but still closer to um, uh, a more of a league average than really uh, distancing ourselves from every, everyone else. So that would be something to work on into the playoffs. But oh my goodness, Sam Reinhardt at the age of 33, second line center, scores 30 goals and 76 assists for 106 points. A new franchise record, new career best, Plus 60, I don't know how he does, I can't even describe how much I love this man. I am totally and uh, irreversibly infatuated with Sam Reinhardt right now. I don't know how he did it this year, but he did it. 106 points from the captain at the age of 33. He's going to be needing a big contract next season after getting that those point totals, but I think we just have to keep him. We'll do our best. It's going to be another tough year for the contract. Yuka Hervin in 54 goals and 102 points of his own. New career highs in all those categories for him. Patrick Laine, 99 points. New career high once again, smashing his old one by over 10 points. So crazy career years all around. One, two, three, four, five, six players at point per game or higher. Philip Budes, 42 goals, 91 points. Vaclav Klesla, 39 goals, 84 points. Felipe Sanderson, point per game, 82 in 82. Jacob Perrault, check this out. He had 68 points in 82 games, playing 11-13 per night. This guy has been a, has just turned into a simulation monster. We traded for him all the way back in year number one, I believe, and we had him in the AHL for a few years. He came in that deal with Anaheim, I believe it was the Max Domi deal, and then he has just been amazing ever since he's been here, and wow, 68 points, career highs in goals and assists, more assists than he had career high points, so... Uh, expiring deal, still an RFA. I'll do my best to get him re-signed. Adam Boquist, 62 and 82 with a plus 56. Jaden Durpost, 25 goals and 59 points. Hannafin, 55 with a plus 47. Possibly trading Noah Hannafin could be the move this offseason. That'll be a lot of money cleared up, but he's just so good. Lane McLean in his sophomore season, 50 points as our third line center. Very, very good. Uh, Timothy Green in his rookie season as our fourth line center. He simulated well, 36 points. Michael Oliver, 29 goals, 35 points. Lindgren, 32 points with a plus 42. Still three more years on his deal. Matt Grizzlick at the age of 35 puts up 28 points and a plus 41. My goodness, these guys doing it. It's, it's crazy what they can do. 
Jonathan Bannister, his rookie year, 25 points, 18 goals in the fourth line. Travis Dermott, 21 points and a plus 38. Hats off to him. Josh Brooks, 16 points and a plus 39. What an amazing, amazing season. Our best season in franchise history when it comes to point scoring, goal scoring, and everything. Tough year from Yusei Saros. Great record, 44, 18, and 3. Two shutouts, but a sub-900 save percentage and around three goals against per game. Meanwhile, Brent Kopstol's 12-3-2, 9-14 save percentage, 2.42 goals against average. So interesting that maybe we'll roll with him a little bit in the playoffs if we run into a couple of speed bumps. I'll be keeping track of that with Yusei Saros. Sam Reinhart, not good enough for the Art Ross, unfortunately. Taylor Radish, woo, 107. McDavid, 115. The Rock and Richard being a, a tie between Radish and McDavid as well. Hervin and third in NHL goal scoring with 54 in defensive scoring did Boca still lead no this year Quinn Hughes a lot of defensemen scoring a lot of points this year so likely our streak of four consecutive Norris trophies has come to an end and when it comes to goaltending anyone we want to see here Saros tied for most wins in the league definitely not the best numbers though and of course some old friends there like Igor Shesterkin not seeing uh, Mikey DiPietro anywhere so, wow, what a season. As I said, I'll be focusing a bit more in-depth on these closer seasons to when where we left off, as you really want to be keeping track of these players. But uh, without further ado, let's hop into the playoffs as the reigning Stanley Cup champions. In the 2029 playoffs, we find ourselves in a 2027 rematch with the Minnesota Wild. In round number one, we lost game one 5-1. to one. We lost game two by some disappointing score as well. Put Copstals between the pipes, turn the series around, one in seven. Round number two, also one in seven. This is just calendar simulation. In round number three, we win in five games, taking down the Lightning. And now, through three games, we are up 3 0 over the Minnesota Wild in the Stanley Cup Finals. Only calendar simming, no slow simming, and Saros has been terrible. We're going to be calling up Mattis Kivlenix to have the backup role in this potential cup clinching game. I totally forgot to call him up for the last Stanley Cup. We signed him to an eight-year extension when the, when the series began. He still has a year more after this one. The late Mattis Kivlenix, now 32 years of age. He's been in our system the entire series because we have been waiting to get him to Stanley Cup. He was part of the organization. He got himself some AHL championships with Cleveland, but we want him to get his Stanley Cup ring. We want him to get his name on the cup and get his ring that's what one of the major things that we were doing here in this franchise mode series we lost a bit a sight of it since we kept losing out in the conference finals but now here's our opportunity to do so brent copsels has been absolute lights out we'll check out the stats after the playoffs come to an end but in game number four in minnesota a chance to close it out Let's do it. 15 and 7 in the offseason so far. Period number one, it is Jaden Durapost on Capo Kakin who puts us up. Second period, Minnesota comes back with two Russell and Boldy on Copstals. We are out shooting them 30 to 18, and then Philip Butes on the power play ties it up, and then Yuka Hervinen makes it 3 to 2. We're back up by one. Copsels needs to stand tall for one last period and get Kiv Lennox his ring, get his name on the cup, and get another cup for all of these boys who have been fighting so hard. Let the big dogs eat. We have been saying it ever since, like, year number six. Connor Garland ties it up late 3-3. Three three. Will we see overtime? Yes, we will. Shots 41-29 in our favor, and we're headed to overtime. Overtime in Minnesota. A goal for Columbus makes them back-to-back -back Stanley Cup champions. There's Ville Hinol, the former Blue Jacket. A goal from Minnesota extends this series to five, and we go back to Columbus. One-timer scores. The Wild take it. Ah, oh, poor Copsels. The man was putting on a show. I skipped a lot of what was going on in the period as it wasn't super interesting stuff, but a lot of big saves from him. The Wild have life, and just like last year's Stanley Cup championship, we might be going back to home, ba going back home to win it in front of the fans instead. Shots were 46-33, Kakinen played extremely well, and it will not be a sweep. But that's alright, because like I said, we're going back home to win it in front of the fans, back-to-back -back Stanley Cup championships in Columbus, Ohio. Let's get it done in Game 5, boys. First period, 2-1, Bannister, Boldy, Oliver. One from the wild and two from the good guys. Second period. Oh my goodness. Seven to two. Kakinen just gets pulled after letting in five in the first 25 and a half minutes. Yudes, Durapos, Hervinen, Klesla, Line, everyone is hopping in on the action. 
Ville Hinola, who saw this team win a Stanley Cup last season, unfortunately on the other side of things this time, gets a goal, but we're up by five, headed into the third period. Seven to two is the score. Power play killed off by Minnesota. They need a big rally to come soon, but the captain just adds on with tears in his gray beard. Line A gets his second of the night. Oh my goodness, 9-2 to two is the score. Maracic getting just eaten up out there as well. The poor guy with just about a minute left to go. We'll slow down the speed and we'll hop in. Just about 20 seconds to go now. What a journey. What a big kick, kick save as well from the pillows. Copsels just looking sharp out there. What a journey it's been from all the heartache in the first seven seasons. Stanley Cup champions in years number eight and nine. A dynasty in the making. Just an offensive juggernaut of a team. Throwing the body around like it's nobody's business. And in 2029, the Columbus Blue Jackets are once again Stanley Cup champions. Mattis Kivlenix, there he is, getting his Stanley Cup. Ah, oh, I can't wait to get him in that team picture. Taking down the Minnesota Wild, who beat us in seven in 2027. We get our revenge in 2029. Oh my goodness, what a run. What a run. Again, we're going to be tough next season with a salary cap. Going to have to re-sign Sam Reinhardt. He's going to be wanting a lot of money. We know that this team can't be forever, but we'll do our best and we'll keep fighting because we have such strong pieces, insane firepower in that top six, as I just keep saying. And it's two Stanley Cups in nine years with three consecutive Stanley Cup final appearances now. I believe the Smythe is either going to Line a or to Kopsels. Most likely to Line a though, as I believe he was the points leader for the team. And yes, it is. Patrick Line a at the age of 31 now, I think. Look at that flow. With the A on his chest as well, 30 points in the playoffs. Very well deserved. Very well deserved. I love that image right there. Patrick Line a take a bow, buddy. And once again, Gary calling over Sam Reinhardt as the captain, raising the cup for the second time in as many years. very Something to be very proud of with his 100 plus point season as well. What a campaign for him and it culminates in this, raising the Stanley Cup in front of the home fans once again. Sam Reinhardt, who's gonna get it first this year? Oh yes, it goes to Noah Hannafin next with the A on his jersey. Back to back Stanley Cup champion. He knows that this team is gonna have a tough time in the cap situation. He knows he may have to leave. He's gonna it's gonna hurt everyone's hearts. But right now, back to back Stanley Cups. Next it goes on to Adam Boquist. Yes. Came in the Seth Jones trade in real life and in the game version here as we traded Seth Jones to Chicago. We got Boquist and Kubalik. Kubalik ended up getting flipped for Hervinen, so it was a great haul for Seth Jones and Boquist with his two Norris trophies and two Stanley Cups. Same for Noah Hannafin, two Norris trophies and two Stanley Cups. Really, really well done. Great image right there. And he's going to pass it on to the rookie goaltender, Brent Kopstals. What a crazy journey that is from a fifth or sixth round pick to backing up Saros to taking the starter role to just backstopping us to a Stanley Cup in very big games throughout the series that we had. Ladies and gentlemen, get your cameras, get your phones, snap a picture and take a screenshot because it will last a lifetime. Patrick Line, 30 points in 24 games, Hervinen with 23, Klesla and Sanderson with 22, Reinhardt 21 in 24, Boquist 20, Hughes 19, Hannafin 16 with a plus 16, Durapo 7 and 7 for 14, Lane McLean 12, Perrault with 8, Bannister 7, Dermot 6 and a plus 15, Green with 5, Brooke with 4, Michael Oliver 3 goals, Lindgren 3 assists, plus 17, and Grizzlick with a goal to get another ring at the age of 35. Brent Kopstel, 16-5-1 with three shutouts, a 9-21 save percentage, and 2.46 goals against average. You say Saros, by the way? Three games, three losses, 8.52 save percentage, 3.40 goals against average. Yeah, he will not be coming back next season. Uh, maybe Mattis could even be the NHL backup. No, it'll probably be Olivier Rodrigue. But regardless, very, very happy we got Mattis on the ice to get his Stanley Cup. A big retirement class in 2029, which includes, if we scroll down a little bit, the former captain, Boone Jenner, who goes out in the Maple Leafs, 509 points in 1,225 games. 
He has his he has a Stanley Cup ring. All his years spent with us, the franchise record in games played as well with the Stanley Cup ring to remember it all by. If you take out those 11 games and five points with Toronto, that means he would have 100 and 47 games played in the playoffs with 61 points being scored. He's been a big presence, big role, and we wish him the best in his retirement. Awards now, back-to-back -back Stanley Cups for us, three consecutive President's Trophies, once again facing Minnesota and another Prince of Wales for us. Individually award, individual awards now. Individual awards now, McDavid, Art Ross. Heart going to Sam Reinhardt. Let's go. Very well-deserved Hart trophy from Sam Reinhardt. Boquist wins back-to-back -back James Norris's. What? I didn't think he was going to get it this year. That's three James Norris trophies in five years and five consecutively going to Columbus Blue Jackets defensemen. That's insane. Good for him. Lady Bing to Pasternak. Calder going to Green. Really? Wow. Good for him. Our first Calder, I think, actually, since Klesla. Fourth line center, and he gets the Calder. Good for him. That's really great to see. Hopefully our fourth line forward, uh, center moving forward a little bit as well. Line A, Smythe. Vezina going to Lucas Dostal, as well as the Jennings. Masterson to McIsaac for back-to-back -back years. Coach of the Blackhawks winning Jack Adams. Albrecht winning the Ryan O'Reilly Award. Ted Lindsay, yes, going to Sam Reinhart. And Morris Richard going to Connor McDavid. Double digits, year number 10 in the top six remains the same. Klesla, Hughes, Sanderson, plus three on the first line. Sanderson up down to 91 for some reason. Second line, Line, Reinhardt, and Hervinen. Sam Reinhardt decided to sign on for two more seasons at 10.175. We'll bring him to the age of 35. Then we'll see what happens closer to the end of his career, but very happy to have him back after his huge year last year. Third line, Jake DeBrusque signed in free agency two years at under a million dollars. Love to see that. Lane McLean signed on long term to be our third line center of the very distant future. Eight years at only 4.375, so a very team-friendly deal after he won two cups in his first two seasons. Sylvain Le Cavalier on the third line. He is a former fifth-round pick of ours, so nice to see him making the NHL. Fourth line is Bannister, JT Miller, who signed on for one year, 1 1.5, and Joachim Pitkinen, who we signed from, who we drafted, excuse me, 25th overall in 2028. Nice to see him in the NHL as well. Thankfully, we were able to hang on to Noah Hannafin, who has now dropped to an 89, but that's all right. Plus three with Adam Boquist. We signed Dylan Coughlin in free agency. He only wanted 1.65 for two years, so a huge, huge steal there. And we kept Josh Brook one year at, sorry, two, two years at 2.65. Oscar Albelin, we signed him a fifth round pick from Dallas. Between the pipes, it will be Brent Copsell's getting the starting role this season. Age of 26, only 82 overall, but he seems to simulate well, so hopefully that will continue. He will be backed up by Caden Primo, who we signed to a two year deal at 0 0.8 million. So extremely tight as always in the salary cap, but we are continuing to run it back with the same top six. A few tweaks here and there, and it should be another strong season as we search for the three-peat. Our 10th season with the Blue Jackets was a very successful one. Not a fourth consecutive President's Trophy, but good enough to once again win the Metropolitan Division and Eastern Conference. Second best in the NHL with a record of 53-20-9, scoring 4.11 goals for per game, but allowing quite a few goals at 3.12. Power play of 31% was second best in the NHL, and penalty kill of 76 was down close, probably our worst that we've ever had, to be honest. Despite us having some of our best defensive players, it's because of the player type. So I, it's, it's interesting, you know, 80 overall with good defensive stats. We were getting in the high, mid 80s. A sniper with 90s and everything, five-star defense. Here we are at 77.6%. So that can be fixed moving into the offseason, but look at the regular season scoring. Vaclav Klesla setting a new franchise record in points with 109. 45 goals, 64 assists, career highs in all those categories. Crazy, crazy numbers from him. A fantastic season from our 95 overall high franchise sniper. Philip Eudes, 52 goals and 99 points from him. Just consistently getting in the 90 point range. Fantastic. Felipe Sanderson, 86 in 82, 73 assist year. Sam Reinhardt now at the age of 34 puts up an 80 point season. He is not stopping anytime soon. Patrick Laine, 78 points in 82 games. He's still got it as well. Very consistent. Lane McLean, our third line center, puts up 65 points as an 84 overall. Career highs in assists and points right there. Very nice from our new third line center of the future. Yuka Hervin, a bit of a down year. 34 goals and 62 points from him. Uh, career low, actually, ever since his 
first two seasons on the Rangers, but that's okay. At least he has the scoring by committee to help him out. Adam Boquist, 54. Hannafin, 53. Bannister, 48 points with 33 goals. Uh, 12 of them coming on the power play. JT Miller in the fourth line role, 39 points. DeBrusque, 35. LeCavalier, 31 and 22 goals. Pitkin in 24. Lindgren, 23 with a plus 26. Brook, 22. Uh, Albelin, 17. And Coughlin, 16. Goaltending, Kopstels, not the best year. 43, 17, and 8. A good record with two shutouts. But a sub-900 save percentage and over three goals against per game. Unfortunate. He has now dropped from medium lead to medium starter potential. So, a bit odd. I suppose the uh, contract, the, the system knew that he wouldn't grow very much. That's why he was willing to, grow, to take that contract. A bit odd, but regardless, if he doesn't work out, we do have Brain Cross, another medium league goalie in our system. Uh, you know, definitely not over for Copsels yet, but an off year for him. Primo backing him up went 10, 3, and 1. Those 109 points were also good enough for best in the NHL, so the Art Ross going to Vaclav Klesa in 2030. The Morris Richard Trophy almost going to Philip Eudes. He finishes second, maybe not quite almost, but he does finish second in league goal scoring. Amirov with 62 will take the Morris Richard. In the playoffs, we could not complete the three-peat as although we took down the New York Islanders in five games in round number one, we fell in six in round number two to the eventual Stanley Cup champion Washington Capitals who took on, once again, the Minnesota Wild who won the Western Conference. So, so funnily enough, every single time that we have lost in the playoffs within this franchise mode, which is maybe five five times, four or five times in these ten seasons, it has been to the eventual Stanley Cup champion. So... Some more bad luck. The Capitals were just on a tear, and fortunately, they had to get through us. In the playoffs, we had three players above a point per game in Eudes, Klesla, and Sanderson at 12. Line 8 point per game at 11. A lot of terrible plus minuses, like Noah Hannafin at a negative 8. Really makes no sense. I'm not sure what went, what went wrong in the simulation. Boak was at a negative 9, so just the simulation was not in our favor, unfortunately. Goaltending, Kopsels, 6-4-1, 896 save percentage, 3.11 goals against. Almost identical to what he put up in the regular season. So we'll see what happens over the offseason with some growth and hopefully he can still be our starter moving forward. Funny how the last five President's Trophies have been split between us and Minnesota. Who would have thought that back in the year 2000? Klesla winning the Art Ross Trophy. Love to see that as well as the Hart Memorial. So back-to-back -back Columbus Blue Jackets. Excuse me, back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back with Philip Hughes as well. So three consecutive uh, Columbus Blue Jacket wins in the heart, all going to different players. Art Ross of Klesla, first time since Hughes as well in 2027-28. Can't forget about him. James Norris going to Mikhail Sergachev, so breaking the five-year streak that Boakfast and Hannafin had. Lady Bing once again to Pedersen, Calder to Bobkov and the Islanders. Conn Smythe to Scott Lawton. What? Vezina goes to Uko Pekka Lukanen. Jennings going to Kakinen and Tristan Jarry. Masters into a guy in the Preds. Jack Adams, coach of the Sens. Albrecht once again winning the Ryan O'Reilly Award. Ted Lindsay going to Vaclav Klesla. Third straight year goes to a Blue Jacket. And Morris Richard to Amirov. Another doozy of retirement class in 2030, including former Blue Jacket John Tavares. 1,159 points in just under 1,500 games. Other former Blue Jackets here, Philippe Dano goes out at, on the Ottawa Senators, 533 points in under 1,100 games, and Zach Hyman with exactly 500 points in one game over 1,100. For the goalies, Connor Hellebuck calling it a career, as well as Jonas Corpisalo, only the age of 36, he goes out at 75 overall, record of 217, 152, and 30. So moving into 2031, always more cap jujitsu to do. We'll hopefully figure out the goaltending situation and look to get back on the horse for year number 11. Year number 11, let's hit it. Top six looking the same as always. Klesla, Jude, Sanderson, plus three. Line eight, Reinhardt, and Hervenen on the second line with the plus one. Third line, DeBrusque and McLean now up to an 86 overall. Love to see that. Bannister there on the right wing. He signed a big extension, six years at just over four million, coming off of a 33 goal season with five star shooting. Hopefully, he is kind of that 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 you know the Jacob Perrault type of guy we've had in that third line right wing role for most of this franchise mode. Fourth line, Alf Peterstrom, five star shooting prospect, former first round pick, was on waivers. Signed him for seven years, 1.225. That's great. Joachim Pitkinen, we have him signed for another couple seasons. We drafted him in the first round, and Serge Bergeron. 6th round pick in 2026, two-way forward, pretty solid stats all around, and he is an 80 overall. Defense, Hannafin, Boquist, Brook, Lindgren, 
Albalin and Coughlin, all the same as last season. Kopstel's starting between the pipes at an 82 overall with his exact starter potential. Now that's a bit disappointing. And Brayan Cross, medium elite, a sixth round pick in 2025. We have him signed for one more season as the cap situation was a bit tight this year. Almost lost him. We lost a couple of prospects we couldn't sign, unfortunately. Salve Le Cavalier, for example, is still an RFA. We don't have the money to sign him, so he'll probably just, we'll probably have to trade his rights or something. Next year, Hannafin's contract will be running out, so hopefully we can get him for cheaper. Same for Sam Reinhardt's contract running out, so we can get him for cheaper moving forward, and that'll help retool the rest of the team. Regardless, year number 11, let's hit it. Year number 11 was a smashing success here in Columbus as we once again captured the Metropolitan Division, Eastern Conference, and President's Trophy as best team in the NHL. Once again, just a little bit ahead of the Toronto Maple Leafs right on our heels, but a record of 61-20-1, and one of our best seasons in franchise history, scoring over four and a quarter goals four per game and allowing 2.62. Our power play of 34.8%. Second in the NHL, but still amazing at over a third of power play opportunities resulting in a goal. Penalty kill at 83.5, third best in the NHL, a great improvement from last season. Call the architects or whoever you want to call it the arena because we need to build a statue of Sam Reinhardt, man. 35 years of age and the captain puts up 108 points. A new career high in goals and points. I don't know how he does it. He signed a two, uh, another ex one year extension after this one for somewhere in the seven millions. He's coming back next year. He is not slowing down. He is an absolute tank and he has been such a huge part of this franchise, perhaps the biggest leadership, scoring, everything. Philip Eudes scored 53 goals and 100 points, second best season of his career. Yuka Hervinen, big bounce back season, 48 goals and 95 points. Klesla, 95 points. Sanderson, 91 points. Line a bit of a down year at the age of 32. He scored 66 points in all 82 games. Hannafin, 64 points and a plus 38, considering trading him due to the contract, but he signed on two-year extension in the nine millions, so that's a great uh, relief for us in the cap. Lane McLean, 60 points for him. Boquist, 55 plus 31. Pitkin in 43. My goodness, getting just, I got off oh, some power play time, that's why. Alf Pedderstrom, 38 for him. Bannister, 19 goals, 32 points. Bergeron, 32. DeBrusque, 27. Lindgren, 23, and a plus 52. The man is a plus what in his career? Plus four, sorry, plus 300 flat in his career. Plus 300. Josh Brook, 22 points and a plus 55. What a couple seasons it's been, uh, three seasons now that it's been for him on this team. Really, really great stuff. Albalin, 16 points. Coughlin, 8 points. Now between the pipes, Copsels went 49-13-1 and with 6 shutouts. Great season from him. 907 save percentage. 2.52 goals against average. And Cross backing him up went 12-7-0 with 1 shutout of his own. 902 save percentage, 2.90 goals against average. Is the 100 are the 108 points of Sam Reinhardt enough to win the Art Ross? No. Wow, what a season the NHL. Elias Pettersson, the biggest season I've seen in this whole franchise mode, scoring 128 points. Yuha Allen, just lighting it up with him. Reinhardt, third best in the NHL at 108. So tough break. And uh, Votek Romas. Leafs are just going off right now. 59 goals for him. My goodness. So, a great season from Reinhardt. Unfortunately, no Art Ross, but we know that he won it in our hearts. And look at that shooting percentage at 20.6. So, another President's Trophy, and we're moving into the playoffs, firing on all cylinders. And in the playoffs, oh, so close, but heartbreak. As we sweep through the Buffalo Sabres, beat the Rangers, always the Rangers, in seven, take down the Panthers in six, but then lose in the Stanley Cup Finals in five games to the Colorado Avalanche. Another fantastic postseason. Felipe Sanderson, 33 points in 22 games. Klesla, 29. Hughes, 22. Sam Reinhardt, 35 years old, 20 points. He always shows up in the playoffs. If you're wondering about his playoff points, just curious right now, even though he hasn't retired yet, 146 points in 155 games. He shows up. Hervin in 18, same for McLean. Boquist 13, Line A 12. Only one goal from Line A, so that's odd. Peterstrom 11, Pitkin in 11, DeBrusque 11, Bannister, Hannafin, Lindgren, all the way down the list here. Goaltending, how did Kopstels do? He was 13, 5, and 4. Brutal overtime losses. Two shutouts, 902 save percentage, 2.84 goals against average. Just a little bit of bad luck as we almost got our third cup in four years, but it was our fourth President's Trophy in five years. 
and once again making it to the Stanley Cup Finals for four times, the fourth time in five years. Individual awards, Pedersen, Art Ross, and Hart. James Norris going to Sandine, who's back on the Maple Leafs. Pedersen, Lady Bing, Calder to a guy in the Coyotes. Conn Smythe to McKinnon, Vezina to Gagne on the uh, Islanders. Copsel's winning the Jennings, so that's really nice to see. So thankfully, with Reinhardt and Hannafin taking discounts, we can keep them and use that money elsewhere. So with the team performing as it did here in year number 11, year number 12 should be even better. Retiring in 2031 is Oliver Bjorkstrand, one of our longest serving players in franchise history. 767 points in 1,146 games, spending almost his entire career here in Columbus. Just the last five years going to the Capitals, but before that, everything with the Blue Jacks. He has some really good seasons with the with the Capitals, 70 plus points. Of course, they always blow up once they leave. So congrats on a great career to him. As well as to our nemesis, as always, Mr. Elvis Merzlikens. He went out going out 211, 185, and 47. 904 save percentage, 2.91 goals against average. As well as Chris Drieger, who we had for a little bit. He has a losing, a losing record in his career, unfortunately. There is a retirement class of 2031. And with the 30th overall selection in the draft, we take Nicolas Cousineau, 55 overall, medium elite, gem goalie prospect. Hopefully our real starting goalie of the future as we've had a few medium elites that haven't really panned out. Hopefully this will be the Taking one. Taking a shot on a very highly projected goalie and hopefully he will be the guy in coming years. Year number 12. Top six looking the same as always. Ekelesla, Hughes, Sanderson with the plus three. Sanderson at a 93 overall. Second line, Line A, Reinhardt and Hervenen. Hervenen up to a 93, Reinhardt down to an 87, Line A down to an 89 as they're starting to get a little more up there in age. Third line, Pitkinen, McLean, and Pedersen. Pretty strong third line. Fourth line, Brian Oshie, our second round pick in 2025, with Landon McCallum, free agent signing, and Serge Bergeron. Defense, Hannafin and Boquist, Lindgren and Keandre Miller, who we traded for from the New York Rangers, giving up some prospects and Sylvain Le Cavalier and um, that third line sniper. What was his name? Uh, Jonathan, what's his name? With the 33 goals, then last year he didn't do as well. Forgettable's record, unfortunately. Third pair, Albelin and Brook. Between the pipes, we got two 82 overalls now in Cross and Copstals. I'm surprised we're not seeing more growth from these guys with all the ice time they're getting, but they're both at 82 at the moment. So Hannafin's going to have his contract expiring, but we signed him to two years at 9.25. Boquist's contract will be expiring after next season, so we still have a little bit more time with him. Ryan Lindgren, his contract expiring this year. We signed him to three years at 5.4 around, I believe, something like that. I'll recap that next season. And then the big issues start to come into play because Klesla, Eudes, Hervenen, and Line all have expiring contracts. So I'll work on that during this season. It's not going to be easy. We have maybe $53 million in extension dollars, but a lot of them are going to be wanting $14, $15, $16 million each. So I'll work my magic as best as possible. This could be our last season with this top six altogether. So let's make it count. Get those banners out of storage. It's another President's Trophy season here in Columbus. You love to see it. And once again, Toronto right behind us. Very strong Eastern Conference. A record of 62, 19, and 1. Scoring 4.12 goals for per game. Tied with the Maple Leafs, but 2.55 goals against. In a very offensive league, it seems like. Many teams letting in over 3 goals per game. So at 2.55, that is very, very impressive. Power play of 23.1%. Our first time in a long time they're not in the top three, but still in the top 10, not an issue there on the special teams. Pounding kill at 78.5, not at the bottom of the league, but definitely could have been better. Was not one of our stronger years when it comes to the special teams, somewhere around the middle of the league. In the points category, Philip Eudes, 109 points, 52 goal season from our first line centerman. A new career high for him in assists and points, a plus 59 as well. Klesla, 101. Second best total in his career. A new career high in goals at 48. Sanderson, 97 and 82. Hervin in 74. Reinhardt at the age of 36 gets 73. Patrick Line, a bit of a down year again, 62 from him. Lane McLean, 55. Same for Hanneman. Hannafin with a plus 59. Boquist, 52 with a plus 54. Keandre Miller, 46 points and a plus 50. Pedersen 44, Pitkin in 39, McCallum, Bergeron, Oshi, all the way down. Lindgren was a plus 44 down the list there. Goaltending, Cross ended up getting most of the starts, going 39, 12, and 1 with five shutouts. But Copstals had the better numbers at 23, 9, and 0. Two shutouts, 921 save percentage, 2.15 goals against average. I will be starting him moving into the playoffs.
Oh, but in the playoffs, after making it through the Canadians in five, then the Devils in six, we drop a seven-game heartbreaker against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Tough when the two best teams in the NHL are from the Eastern Conference. One and two in the NHL face off in the Eastern Conference Finals. We fall in seven, and the Leafs go on to beat the Blues in six. So once again, the trend continues that we only ever lose to the eventual Stanley Cup champions. Hervinen and Klasla both scored 21 points in 18 games. Hughes had 20, Sanderson point per game, Line, Reinhardt, Miller, uh, McLean, Hannafin, all down the list we go. Goaltending was a bit difficult. Kopsels went 10-6-0. I swapped him out for Cross in Game 6 against Toronto. He got the win, but then dropped in Game 7. So, man, it was it was tough goaltending from both of these guys. Really disappointing. That was our downfall in the end. Unfortunately, becoming a theme in this series. And like we've been saying, a lot of expiring deals coming up here. Uh, all of those one-year deals. Not everyone's going to be able to come back next season. So I have to pull some GM magic. We'll see what we can do. Awards for this season. Another President's Trophy for us. And we did not make the, conference, the Stanley Cup Finals this season. Art Ross, Hart to the guy from the Leafs. Noah Hannafin, what? Wins the James Norris out of nowhere? Okay, Noah Hannafin, why not? His third James Norris Trophy with us. Pedersen, another Lady Bing. Calder, Conn Smythe. Vezina to Samsonov. Jennings goes to Cross and Kopstals. We keep getting these uh, Jennings trophies. All right. Uh, Jack Adams goes to Travis Sanheim, the coach of the Anaheim Ducks. Wow, how about that? In the year 2032 only. Ryan O'Reilly Award goes to Marco Rossi, Lindsay, Morris Richard. Okay. So, like I said, not going to be easy to pull that managerial magic, but I'll do my best and see you back for year number 13. Big retirement class in 2032 as McKinnon, Shifley, and Huberto all go out with over 1,400 points. Point, Ehlers, Goudreau, all these names. Seth Jones, though, a big one. A name that we were supposed to keep around for as long as possible when we came in. We tried to keep him. Things didn't quite work out after a few seasons. We moved him to Chicago Blackhawks in the Boquist deal. We got Kubalik as well, who turned into Hervinen, so it really worked out. He had some fantastic years in Chicago, so I don't think he's too sad about that. So he ends up uh, finishing off his career with the Blackhawks. Kubalik also retiring, played only 20, 30 games with us. Saros, of course, former goaltender of ours, as well as Tristan Jerry. Heading into year number 13, top six, always the same as always. Klesla, Eudes, Sanderson with a plus three. Line A, Reinhardt and Hervinen on that second line. Sam Reinhardt now at the age of 36, 85 overall, signed a two-year extension, only worth 4.55 per season. Nice hometown discount there. Third line, Darren Kennedy, a free agent uh, pickup with Lane McLean and Alf Pedersstrom. Fourth line, Bergeron, Pitkinen, and Rick Tripp, another free agent acquisition. Defense now, unfortunately, we did have to move on from Noah Hannafin. He was down to an 83 overall. He was still making a lot of money and still had a fair bit of trade value, so I knew that we wouldn't be able to re-sign him. Therefore, trading him while he still had value was the best course of action. We went and got Damien Roche, or Roche, or Roche, whatever you want to pronounce it. 88 overall, 2-way D, 23 years of age, signed for three more years at $7.62 million from the Vegas Golden Knights, former third overall selection, 4.5-star defense. Top pair with Adam Boquist, now at 32 years of age. Miller and Lindgren on the second unit. And then Jalen Maloney, another trade acquisition. Former 19th overall pick of the St. Louis Blues. Two-way D with four-star defense. One more year at 0 0.8. And Josh Brooks, still out here. Didn't think he'd be here for so long. He's been a great piece for us. Maloney, also fun little piece of trivia. Our head coach's name is Maloney. So maybe we could say this is his son. That would be a fun little trivia piece. Copstools, now backed up by Maximus Slychuk. Third round pick from Detroit in 2023, signed him to a one-year deal. Unfortunately, we couldn't keep the other goaltender as he wanted a six or seven million dollar deal, and we could not afford that as things are always very tight to make that top to keep that top six together. Speaking of our head coach, Mr. Maloney, here is it Rob Maloney? Yes, A pluses in every category with an all-time record of 646, 279, and 59. Three cups, six Presidents trophies close to a 70 winning percentage. He is now 67 years of age though, so I'm not sure how much longer he'll be around. With Hannafin off the books, we have 16 million moving into next year to extend Boquist and Line A if that would work out. Plus, we probably want to look at getting a better starting goalie because Copsels doesn't seem to be growing very much. But that is for next season. For now, let's head into year number 13.
And also make note that with Noah Hannafin gone, Adam Boquist is now our second alternate. Make way for the Presidents. Year number 13, once again, President's Trophy winning season for the Columbus Blue Jackets, going 63, 11, and 8, 134 points. Once again, just ahead of the Toronto Maple Leafs, 4.23 goals for a game and 2.49 against. Power play at 29.5% was second best in the NHL by just 0.1% off. And penalty kill of 87.7, best in franchise history and best in the NHL, so wonderful special teams. Not to mention finishing the season on a 12-game winning streak. Vaklav Klesla, 53 goals and 106 points, second best season of his career and new career high in goals for him. Fantastic season from the franchise sniper at 96 overall. Felipe Sanderson setting a new franchise record in assists with 80 in one season and a new career high in points as well as he breaks the 100 point plateau for the first time in his career, scoring 104 points. Philip Hughes, bit of a down year comparatively to what he's been doing, but still an 88 point season for him, over a point per game, 38 goals. Patrick Line, nice bounce back season. He's back into the 70 plus point category, 34 goals from him at the age of 30. 34. Yuka Hervinen, 74 points and 42 goals. Ulf Pedersstrom, 29 goals and 72 points as a third liner. Getting power play time as well, but 12 and a half minutes a night, 72 points. That's just wild. It's still signed for four more years after this at a very cheap contract. Sam Reinhardt, 37 years of age, 84 overall, but still scores 65, or is it 64? 65 points. Down year for sure, but you know when he's getting that old, he can have a little bit of a leeway there. Lane McLean, 63. Boquist, 57 with a plus 41. Roche in his first season, 107 penalty minutes. I guess that's why we're killing so many penalties. 52 points and a plus 38. Condre Miller, 51. Pitkinen, Bergeron, Kennedy, Tripp, Brook, plus 43. Lindgren, plus 25. Maloney, the coach's kid, 12 points and a plus 41. Brent Kopstels went 56, 8, and 6. What? Seven shutouts, 913 save percentage, 2.41 goals against average. My goodness. Good thing we have signed him, him signed for three more seasons. Despite the low overall, if he can keep playing like this, that's fine with me. Slideshow. Maximus Aurelius himself, 7, 3, and 2. Not the best numbers, but not too shabby. Run scores, and in year number 13, Vaklav Klutschla scores the game-winning goal in game number 6 of the Stanley Cup Finals to give the Columbus Blue Jackets their third Stanley Cup. What a run it was. We'll see in the playoff tree in just a minute. But a great overtime winner in game number six from the Clutch King himself. The Conn Smythe deservedly going to Vaclav Klesla once again for the second time. It hasn't had it since our first down the cup, but a 42-point postseason. One of the best of all time. Look at that dome, as shiny as ever. Oh my goodness, three rings and two con smites for the franchise sniper. And Sam Reinhardt called over once again by a very young and spry looking Gary Bettman. Shakes hands, a little gray in his hair, and in Winnipeg raises the Stanley Cup as captain of the Columbus Blue Jackets for the third time in his career. The years he spent on Columbus, they have a, Col they have a Sam Reinhardt day in Columbus, Ohio. And last but certainly not least, Brent Kopstels. The former late round selection, elite potential, dropped the starter potential, but has still gotten it done, raises the cup once again as starter, don't care about his overall because he gets it done. Oh my goodness, there's Boquist with the A on his jersey, all the boys in here, get your cameras, snap a screenshot, and enjoy it. It'll last a lifetime. Quite the run to the Stanley Cup here in 2033. We swept through the Sabres, took down the Devils in five. A seven-game thriller against the Leafs. Last year, we lost and they went on to win the Cup. This time, we won and we went on to win the Cup in six games against those Winnipeg Jets. And we were setting records when it comes to the points here. Klesla with 42 points in 22 games. Felipe Sanderson with 38 and Hughes with 34. Imagine scoring 34 points and it being the third most on your team in a playoff run. Sam Reinhardt, 37 years of age, 20 points in 22 games. Ah, oh, just an, just a catalyst out there. Hervin in 17, Line A 17, Boquist 15, Miller, Pedestrum going all the way down the list here. 
great performances from everyone all around. Great plus minuses. Josh Brook. He was supposed to just be a one or two season guy. Now, let's count it. One, two, three, four, five full seasons. He's been up like between a plus 11 and 55 the whole time. Amazing. And Brent Kopstels, let's check it out. 16, 4, and 2. One shutout, 905 save percentage, 2.72 goals against. The former fourth round pick, excuse me, in 2022. Checking the awards now. It's been a while since we got a Stanley Cup, so it's great to be here four years later. Another President's Trophy, of course, Prince of Wales. Zegris won the Art Ross, but Klesla captures the heart. His second in four years. James Norris so that, going to that guy on the Devils. Zegris, Lady Bing, Calder on the Sabres. Klesla, the Con Smythe. Brent Kopsels capturing the Vezina Trophy at an 82 overall. Love it. Jennings going to Kopsels as well. Masterton to Mikey Anderson. Jack Adams, coach of the Sabres. The Ryan O'Reilly Award to Nazarov, Klesla winning the Ted Lindsay, also second time in four years, and Lume capturing the Morris Richard. And get out your tissues. After his third Stanley Cup championship, Sam Reinhardt calls it a career at the age of 37. Still an 84 overall, still had one more year in his contract. Oh, I wish he would have stayed for one more. One 1,258 points in 1,462 games. I've never seen him simulate this well, uh, you know, minus his little bit of time with Buffalo. But if we're going just by Columbus Blue Jackets, it would be 1,003 points in 1,062 games. What a career in the Columbus Blue Jackets for Sam Reinhardt. And when it comes to the playoffs as well, extremely clutch. His entire career in the playoffs being only with us. 180 points in 195 games. 39 goals, 141 assists. I have no words. Just the ultimate captain of this franchise mode. Never went quietly into the night. Always a huge performer. Never say die attitude. One of the big dogs that always love to eat. Uh, I have no words. I'm really disappointed he's retiring. Best season being 35 goals and 73 assists for 108 points. A plus 209 in his career. So glad that he broke the 1,000 points with this franchise. We'll check out the record book as well now that we've completed 13 seasons. I want to see where Reinhardt sits at the time of his retirement. Just really hard to accept that it's over, but... Uh, don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened, right? Sam Reinhardt, an eternal legend of the Blue Jackets, definitely getting a statue in front of the arena. McDavid, Barkov, Marner, Rantanen, Barzil, a bunch of huge names going out. Victor Olofsson, a former Blue Jacket, almost 800 points in his career. And Kyle Wood as well retiring, 174 points in 860 games. For the goalies, it's Andre Vasilevsky retiring, 568 wins in over 1,000 games played. So now a little more salary cap, but a big hole to fill with Sam Reinhardt gone. It's going to be a very interesting offseason to see how we do the jujitsu to make everybody stays on, stay on board, but also see who we can bring into the fold as well. Year number 14, and we do have some changes in the lineup. Klesla, 27 years of age, 96 overall, still on that first line with Eudes and Sanderson. Love that first line. Second line now, 35-year-old, 87 overall, Patrick Laine with Lane McLean, 27 years of age, 85 overall. Four more years at that super cheap contract, 94 face-offs, listed as a second line forward. He's ready to have a breakout season, even though he's been having very, very good ones in recent years. Yuka Hervinen, second line as always. Third line, Trip. Pedderstrom and Matthew Boldy, who we signed in free agency, two years, 4.75 million, had a down year last year, but every other year, 60, 70 plus points, so hopefully third line, power play and all that can help him out. Fourth line, Kennedy, Pitkinen, and Corey Leopold, medium elite, former first round pick, signed him to a seven year deal at $1 million a year. So hopefully he will continue to grow. Damien Roche is still up there with Adam Boquist, 89 and 87. Lindgren now down to an 84 overall. He's on the second pair with Keandre Miller. Maloney still back for one more year, actually signed for two years. And Sergei Galiev, an undrafted free agent, four years at 2.275, rounding out the bottom pair. Copswell's at an 83 overall, now 30 years of age. He's signed on for those three more seasons. Backing him up is Greg Bulbrook, who is a third-round pick from 2027. 
he's signed on for two years as well. So as usual with the core still together but different pieces mixed and matched and move around here and there, I'm very excited to see how this team will simulate without the captain Sam Reinhardt for the first time ever in this franchise mode in year number 14. Another top two finish in year number 14, close to another President's Trophy as we finish just behind the St. Louis Blues. A record of 57, 20, and 5, scoring over 4.5 goals for per game and allowing 2.91. Power play of 32% was second best in the NHL, and penalty kill of 74.5 was one of our worst in franchise history, fourth worst in the NHL, despite having some of our highest overall players ever on the penalty kill units. In the point scoring, Philip Eudes went on a tear with 57 goals and 109 points, tying his career high in points and setting a new career high in goals. Vaklav Klesla, 53 goals and 105 points, new, uh, actually no, tying last season's career high of goals of 53. Felipe Sanderson, 81 assists uh, with 101 points, so three players above 101. So once again, breaking the record that he continues to set, now a new franchise record of assists in a season at 81. Now at the age of 30 is Felipe Sanderson. Lane McLean, our second line center now, 86 points from him, over a point per game. Love to see that. Yuka Hervnan, 78 points, 32 goals. Patrick Line at the age of 35, 77 points and a new career high in goals with 47. Never got ahead uh, more than 30. No, he had 40. And in the first few seasons, but just smashing that with 47 goals. Crazy. This guy is still getting it done. Just a lethal sniper. Boquist turning back the clock as well. 75 point season from him. He hadn't done that in a few years as he was getting down into the 50s the last few. But 75 goals, big uh, points, big resurgence from him. Keandre Miller as well. 71 point season from him. That is a new career high by far. So very well done. Plus 46. Damien Roche, 62 points and a plus 50. Boldy, 60 points in his Jackets debut. Petters from 57. Pitkin in 33. Leopold pole trip and all the way down here Lindgren 13 points and a plus 45 I love this man goaltending Copsels went 29 10 and 1 three shutouts 900 save percentage 2.79 against they pretty much shared the, the crease exactly Greg Bulbrick 28 10 and 4 two shutouts 893 and 2.93 goals against average probably going to go Copsels in the playoffs and in the 2034 postseason, it was jubilation as the Columbus Blue Jackets swept through the Anaheim Ducks in four games to capture another Stanley Cup. It was one of the most OP runs in, in NHL history, I think as at, we barely squeaked out of round number one in game seven overtime against Montreal, took down the Hurricanes in five games, swept through Buffalo in the Eastern Conference Finals, and swept through Anaheim in the Stanley Cup Finals. What a run. And when it comes to the Conn Smythe, not Vaclav Klesa this time, Philip Eudes finally getting his first Conn Smythe in a year where he captured the Morris Richard and the Art Ross, likely also the heart that Ted Lindsay, he gets the Conn Smythe to add to his trophy cabinet. And getting called over for the cup is the new captain now, the Columbus Blue Jackets with Sam Reinhardt gone, Gary looking young. Sorry that I forgot to mention at the start of the season, but Patrick Laine, our captain here in year number 14, and for the first time as captain, he raises the Stanley Cup, coming in that deal from Winnipeg for Pierre-Luc Dubois. All these years later, he finally gets to raise it as captain, another ring for him. It's been such a good time here in Columbus. His first handoff will be to Felipe Sanderson. Very well deserved as well. Oh, now 30 years of age. Ever since he was drafted fourth overall, he has been the Apple Man. He has been Johnny Appleseed, the Dish Master. Ryan Lindgren, a huge, huge piece of the defensive core when he came from the New York Rangers. Integral defensive defenseman, plus minus in the record books for sure as well. He deserves an extra turn with it. So as I mentioned, just a crazy run. Round number one, barely squeaked out in overtime of game seven. Bulldozed through every other team on the way to the Stanley Cup. Yuka Hervinen scored the overtime, sorry, scored the game-winning goal shorthanded 
in game number four against the Ducks. Just clutch performances all around. Hughes 27 and 20. Kalesla 13 goals, 26 points and 20. Sanders in 24. Boldy was a huge piece. Great free agency acquisition. 19 points in 20 games. Pedderstrom 18. McLean 16. Line at the age of 36. Still getting it done with 13 points in the playoffs. Still has the clutch gene in him. All these points down the line here. Goaltending. Kopsos played in seven games, going 4-1-2. and two. Rough numbers, so good thing Bulbrook took over. 12-1-0 and oh, when we turned to him. One shutout, 921 save percentage, and 2.16 goals against average. So back-to-back -back Stanley Cups for us, of course. President's Trophy going to the Blues, though, as we know. Uh, Ducks, first appearance they had in a long time, and our, for us, it was our third appearance in four years in the Stanley Cup Finals. Art Ross going to Philip Eudes, as well as the Hart Memorial Trophy. Love to see that. James Norris going to Darlene. Lady Bing Pedersen called her to the guy in the Rangers. Con Smythe to Philip Eudes. Vezina to Mikey DiPietro. Hey, very well done. Got to do hats off to the former Jackets goaltender, Jennings, as well. Masterton, Jack Adams. Hey, the Selkie going to Marco Rossi. Ted Lindsay to Philip Eudes, as well as the Morris Rocket Richard Trophy. Some big names retiring in 2034, but none of ours. Drysaddle, Couturier, Gensel. Drysaddle was just one point shy of point per game in his career, still at an 84 overall. Line is still here. He's ready to run it back and try to do the one thing that we haven't yet achieved on this franchise, which is the elusive three-peat. And also retiring in 2034, the late Mattis Kivlenix. Didn't play many games in the NHL, only six. So he never quite got his overall high enough to be able to be our backup or anything like that. But I'm glad that we kept him for the entire duration of the franchise mode for while he was still an active player. We got him his Stanley Cup ring, and that was a huge check mark that we achieved in this series. Uh, and unfortunately, Rob Maloney, our head coach, retiring after 2034. He had what, like four or five Stanley Cups, six, seven President's Trophies. So unfortunate to have him go, but thank you for him being such a huge part of this team. We'll have a new A-plus head coach hopefully heading into next season. Year number 15 with our new head coach. Top line still gets a plus three and some plus ones throughout the rest of the lineup. Like to see that. Klesla, Eudes, Sanderson, plus three. Second line, 36-year-old Patrick Laine, 87 overall with Lane McLean and Yuka Hervinen. Third line, Tony Saranaimo, 79 overall, free agent acquisition, former first round pick, has great puck skills and shooting and physical as well, so hopefully he does well in that third line with Pedestrom and Boldy on the last year of his contract. Fourth line, Corey Leopold, Joachim Pitkinen, and Rick Tripp. Defense, all six of our defensemen right here, or excuse me, five of the six, not including Galiev, all are on expiring deals. So it's going to be tough after this one to try and swing it. Might very well be Lindgren's last season here, but Roche and Boquist plus one, Miller and Lindgren plus one, and then Maloney with Galiev zero on that last pair. Goaltending between the pipes, it's Bulbrook at an 83, backed up by Kopstels at an 82. In free agency, we picked up Timofey Kulikov, 25 years old, medium elite. So maybe he could be something of the future. By the way, Nicholas Cousineau is still growing nicely, so that'll be something to keep an eye on. For the captaincy, I glossed over this last season but captain Patrick Laine, first alternate Adam Boquist, and I think the second alternate should actually go to Felipe Sanderson, who's been here longer on the team. He was drafted in 2022, class of 2024 or 25. So I think Sanderson now at 30 years of age deserves that alternate. Year number 15, lots of expiring contracts. Let's run it back to that three-peat. The good times keep on rolling in year number 15 as we are back in the President's Trophy seat. 124 points, a record of 59, 17, and 6. Very tight Metropolitan Division as the top three teams in the NHL all coming from the Metro. We had over four goals, four per game, and just above two and a half goals against per game. Power play at 30.7%, best in the NHL. And penalty kill at 79.6, better than last season. Not at the bottom anymore, but now closer to the middle of the pack. Philip Eudes, once again, leading the team in scoring. 103 points in 82 games for him. Klesla, 42 goals and 96 points. Felipe Sanderson, once again, well above a point per game at 96 in 82 at the age of 31. Lane McLean coming into his own 92-point season for our second-line center. New career highs the last three seasons seasons in a row or actually well the last two seasons in a row at least but 63 in that third one was very solid 65 assists in back-to-back -back years love it Hervin in 42 goals 84 points Keandre Miller at the age of 34 puts up 67 points in a plus 50 
Roche with a 65-point season. Patrick Liney slowing down a little bit, 25 goals and 62 points, now at 85 overall. Boldy, 57 with 30 goals. Boquist, 56 points and a plus 40. Pedestrom, 40 points, 24 goals. Leopold, 20. Pitkinen, 20. Galiev, Saranaimo, Lindgren, plus 47 from line, Ryan Lindgren, by the way. The guy just never stops. The fourth line had a bad plus minus, though. Goaltending, it was Bulbrick going 40, 14, and 6 with 5 shutouts. 909 save percentage, 2.45 goals against. And Kopstel's 19, 3, and 0. One shutout, 903 save percentage, 2.59 goals against average. And the one thing that every great dynasty needs is a three-peat. And in 2035, that is exactly what we do. Taking down the Winnipeg Jets in six games. Seeing them in the Stanley Cup Finals for the second time in three years for our rides to the Stanley Cup Finals. Patrick Laine once again now captaining the team. Uh, captaining the team against the team that traded him away all those years ago. Con Smythe going to look at that gray hair. Lane McLean. 29 points for him. The former first round pick back in the early mid 2020s. In 2035, he gets his first Con Smythe. He has a handful of rings, but now he has an extra thing to go in his trophy cabinet. And once again, possibly for the last time, as captain, Patrick Laine called up to receive the Stanley Cup from good old Gary Bettman. Look at that flow. 36, 37 years of age. And in front of the home fans, he raises the Stanley Cup. Oh, what a beautiful image for the captain. As is becoming the trend here, I'm not sure if it's just EA or what. Let me know your thoughts on this. It, we barely squeak out of the first round in seven games again. But then after that, it's smooth sailing as we go 12-2 and two in the next three rounds. Islanders in five, sweep through the Eastern Finals, and then take down the Jets in five as well. So, I don't know if that's just anecdotal evidence or what, but the first round always seems to be 10 times harder than everything else. When it came to scoring here, Lane McLean, despite having the same amount of points as Yuka Hervinen, who has no con smites of his own, ah, oh, poor guy, but Lane McLean getting the edge in the voting, I suppose. Felipe Sanderson, 25 and 21, use point per game. Klesla, Patrick, line a man, ah. Oh. Boquist, 18 for him now at 34 years of age. Boldy, Roche, Pitkinen, Joaquim. So remember, he's a first-round pick in 2028. He's been great for us. 80 overall only. Miller, Leopold, all the guys down the list here. Goaltending, Bulbrick was not great at just over 900 save percentage. 16-5-0 with two shutouts. Good enough for a Stanley Cup for sure. Not amazing stuff. Kopsel's likely back to having the starter role for us next season. It'll be the last year of that deal that he signed. Ballbrick is going to be wanting six, seven million. Again, it'll be a tough offseason. I'm just trying to figure out what works. Three consecutive Stanley Cups for us. More President's Trophies as well. It was the Jets in the Stanley Cup Finals for the second time in three years, and we had four appearances in five years as well. Art Ross to Abby Boulin. Hart Memorial to Philip Eudes for the second straight season. Love to see that. James Norris goes to Keandre Miller. What? Love it, love it, love it. Very well deserved. Uh, Lady Bing to Matthews. Uh, Lane McLean, Con Smythe, Balbrick winning the Vezina. Now that's a surprise. I love it though. Surprise, according to like I didn't think he would do that at the start of the season. Jennings going to him as well. Anything else? Use getting the Ted Lindsay. Great stuff. Big retirement class in 2035. Kucherov going out with over a point per game in over 1,700 games played. Great career. 785 goals. Pasternak, Veselainen, Makar, Dubé, Chikorin down the list there. But of course, Noah Hannafin being one of them. 863 points in 1,455 games. When we traded him over to the uh, Vegas Gold Knights, he played one season with them, one year in the minors. But take a bow for what an insane career he put up with us. Playing with us from the 2024-25 season all the way up until 2032. So eight full years with us and never put up less than 55 points. Put up between 53 and 69 points every season. Always a crazy plus minus. So hats off to a great career there for Noah Hannafin. Other former players, Jack Rozovic retiring. Of course, when we traded him away, he went off. More anecdotal evidence that he never does well for you. But when you trade him away, he always does great somewhere else. Had 70-plus point seasons there. He could barely get 10 points when he played for us. 
as well as Sam Steele played one or two seasons with us, and another big name being Libor Hayek, as he, defensive defenseman, not a lot of points, but he was such a steady presence for us on that third slash second defensive pair. Had a few years in New Jersey, but look at these plus minuses when he played for us. Just great numbers, even though it wasn't an extensive career. These four seasons were fantastic. Goalies here, Shosturkin retiring, played a couple of seasons with us. He goes out with 438 wins, as well as Danil Tarasov goes out 130, 90, and 22. Sub-900 save percentage. Things never really worked out for him here, unfortunately. Very tough offseason ahead. Let's see how we're looking moving into year number 16. Year number 16, let's hit it. Sanderson, Hughes, Klesla, first line. Line a now at an 82 overall with McLean and Hervinen on the second line. Boldy, Pedestrom, and check this guy out, Stefan Helmer. 84 overall, a low elite, second line forward, 20 years of age, 6'5 power forward, who we drafted in the sixth round in 2033. This is why drafting is so important. Five star physical and shooting. I can't wait to see how this guy simulates on our third line, future top six forward. Fourth line, Trip, Pitkinen, and Walker Turner. Defense, Roche and Boquist. Big extension for Damian Roche. He'll be our guy of the future. Keandre Miller and Boquist are both on one-year extensions. Possibly their last season with us. Depends what the cost is going to be with Maloney there. Third pair, Galiev and Len O'Donnell. First round pick, defensive defenseman, five-star defense in 2029. Between the pipes, it is Brent Kopstels, perhaps on his last season as well, backed up by 80 overall, Timofey Kulikov. With three consecutive Stanley Cups under our belts, let's see what we can do this season. Not a 60 win season, but another President's Trophy here in Columbus in year number 16. The top five teams in the NHL, all from the Eastern Conference, so crazy, crazy Eastern. Uh, 55, 23, and 4, the final record. Four and a half goals for per game, 2.83 against per game. Power play, 34.9, best in the league. And pound and kill, 79.6, somewhere around the middle. Philip Eudes setting a new franchise record with points in a season with 110 points and 50 goals in 82 games. Fantastic season from him. Love to see it. The first line centerman getting it done. Klesla, 46 goals and 107 points. Sanderson, 103 points. So three players above 100 points. Points, and then five players above a point per game. Hervinen 92, McLean 91. He's been great. Patrick Laine at the age of 37, 80 overall, still scores 26 goals and a total of 71 points, even better than last season in all categories. Helmer, great, 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 great revelation. 63 points from him. Petters from 62, big bounce back season from him as he's been struggling the last little bit since he hit 72. Remember that he is a first round pick from Dallas in 2023. He was uh, through free agency, I believe. Roche, 61 points. Boquist, 58. Boldy, 55. Miller, 38. Down year for him, for sure, as he's getting a bit up there in age, understandably. Pitkinen, Tripp, Maloney, Turner, Galiev, and O'Donnell. Rookie season for O'Donnell, plus 27. Great plus minuses, as always. Lane McLean, though, that contract is amazing. It really worked out. Only one year left of it, unfortunately. It's going to be tough to keep the band together for much longer, even as we've had pieces retiring. It's going to be hard to keep that band together for much longer. Kofsels went 48, 16, and 3. 901 save percentage, 2.66 goals against average with two shutouts. Kulikov, 7, 7, and 1. Not the greatest record from him. His numbers weren't fantastic. Fantastic, but really Kopstels is the guy between the pipes. Still only an 82 overall, but getting it done. In the playoffs, the EA system scammed us big time as we lost in six games to a team that had 20 less wins than us, the Detroit Red Wings, in six games, who went on to lose to the Penguins in five, who went on to win the Stanley Cup. So the anecdotal evidence seems to continue to ring true. The first round is the hardest. You get scammed in six or seven games, but if you make it through, you'll sweep the rest of your way to the Stanley Cup. It doesn't make sense that we have five players above a point per game, three guys above 100 points, and then somehow in the playoffs, they all just disappear. And here are all the point totals. I don't even want to go through them. Just sickening, sickening numbers. Kopstels did all right. Yeah, he did great. He had a 920 save percentage and 2.19 goals against average. Just couldn't beat the goalie. Who was the goalie? Mate Modri, who got destroyed by Pittsburgh after. Over a 900 save percentage, a 907, but 3.22 goals against average. 80 overall, of course. An 80 overall goalie shuts down our five over point per game players. Yeah, that's great. Another President's Trophy, as we already mentioned. Uh, Hart Memorial, though, going to Philip Hughes for the third consecutive season. Take a bow, buddy. 
Oh, man, Quinn Hughes, Stutzla, Helmer winning the Calder Memorial Trophy. Absolutely. What a rookie season from him. Looking forward to having him in the top six. Kopstels winning the Vezina, his second, I believe, now, and another Columbus goalie winning the Vezina. Only an 82 overall. Jennings as well going to Kopstels. Great to see that. Hughes winning his third consecutive, Ted Lindsay. And in the retirement class of 2036, lots of big names as always. Looking at names that we've had on our team, Zach Wierenski goes out with 902 points in over 1,500 NHL games. Games. Another player, a created player, Ralph Recker, goes out with 842 points in 1,078 games. Other players that we've had in our team include Liam Foody, 748 points in 1,155 games. Of course, as always, after you trade these players away, they all have fantastic careers as he had 60, 70 point seasons. Yeah, that's great. Couldn't break anything with us, but nothing new there. And Ilya Samsonov leading the goaltending class. So, after three consecutive Stanley Cups, you know, I guess you got to take a little bit of a break. So heading into year number 17 now, we have an extension due for Felipe Sanderson. Lots of other money issues as Boquist and uh, Keandre Miller are going down in overall and they need money if they're going to even stay as we got to figure out who's going to be on defensive core. Heading into year number 17, we have money and contract issues all over our team. The top six, the defensive core, and the starting goaltender. So we'll see what kind of magic we can pull and check out the team at the beginning of 2036-37. In year number 17, the top six continues to remain the same. Klesla, Eudes, Sanderson, now at the age of 32, signed a three-year extension at 15.6 per season. Patrick Laine, likely in his final season at the age of 38, he signed another one-year deal. Bottom six potential, 83 overall now. Lane McLean, final year of his deal. Don't know if he'll be able to come back. He'll want a ton of money. Yuka Hervinen, also the last year of his deal. Third line, Boldy, Pedestrom, and Helmer, probably the future second line. Fourth line, Norton, Pitkinen, and Connor Crane, for, uh, a future third liner for sure. 99 shooting, former first round pick from Minnesota, got him in free agency. Three, uh, excuse me, four years at 4.375, so he'll be around for a little bit. Defense was overhauled as both Boquist and Miller dropped to 81 overall and wanted about seven, eight million dollars each, so we couldn't afford to keep them. So the defense is looking a bit weak this season. We got Dylan Lotz, 83 overall, medium top 4D potential, 24 years of age, signed for four more years at 5.655, got him in a trade from Detroit. Pretty solid attributes. Second pair, Maloney and O'Donnell. Third pair, Kai Blumdahl, a former second round pick of ours, and Sergey Galiev. Goaltending, we ended up signing Brent Kopstel's 82 overall to a four-year deal at 5.775 per season, but it's very unlikely that he uh, we keep him for the entire duration of that deal, as Nicolas Cousineau, now at 23 years of age, is an 80 overall, our medium elite first round selection from 2031, is ready to be the backup and will soon be the starter. So with this season, likely being the end of the line A. Let's see what we can do in year number 17. And with Adam Boquist unfortunately having to move on, Vaclav Klesla now wearing the A on his jersey moving into the 17th season. Also to note that six games into the season, I noticed that this defenseman, Hanu Maki, 82 overall, former first round pick, of seventh overall of the Predators, defensive defenseman, was still in free agency. So I used every dollar we had left over, signing to a one-year, $4 million contract that should bolster the defense for this season. And is much nicer than having a 76 overall on the third pair. I'm really just a broken record at this point. Another President's Trophy in year number 17. The Blue Jackets go 59, 20, and 3. 4.28 goals for per game, 2.93 against. Power play 27.4, third best in the league. Pony kill of 77.3. Disappointing we have back-to-back -back seasons in the 70s and in the bottom 10 pretty much of the NHL. Klossel tied the franchise record of points in a season with 110, but check out Felipe Sanderson who had 90 assists, largely in part to Philip Eudes' 62 goals. So new franchise record in goals from Eudes, assists in Sanderson, and tying in points from Klossel. The big three coming through once again, all getting over 100 points per game, points in the season, excuse me, and five players once again above a point per game. Hervinen at 84, McLean at 83. Patrick Line, 38 years old, 25 goals, 72 points. How does he do it? Damien Roche, 71 points in 82 games from him. That is a new career high by quite a bit. Uh, yeah, by about six points there. So great season from him. Boldy, 51. Helmer, 50 points. Peterstrom, Maloney, Pitkinen. Lots in his first season, 31 points and a plus 64 going down the line there. Goaltending, Kopsels went 48, 15, and 2 with two shutouts. Not the greatest numbers, but a great record. Same thing in Nikola Kuzinov's case. And in the postseason, we sweep. 
the Calgary Flames to once again win the Stanley Cup for the fourth time in five years. What a dynasty this team is. Of course, led by all the big names as always. It came with a seven-game thriller in the Eastern Conference Finals against the Toronto Maple Leafs, but then an easy sweep of Calgary, including a Game 4 shutout from Brent Kopstals. Capturing the con Smythe was, hey, Seth Jones, hey, welcome back, Seth, good job, buddy, 30 points, good job, at the age of 50 with the L on his jersey, yeah, good job, buddy, fantastic glitch right there, we'll find out who actually won it when we see in the awards uh, screen after this, and then in what will likely be the last time of his career, Patrick Liney with a C on his chest for the fourth time in five years is called over Gary looking so spry and young to lift that Stanley Cup. Look at the flow. Patrick Liney, who would have thought all those years ago that he would be captaining this team to so many cups. Him and Sam Reiner at the leadership core. Next to getting the Stanley Cup. There he is. Seth Jones. You deserved it, buddy. You never got your cup with us here. So let your ghost just be reincarnated and come back and get a... Yeah, that's it. Send him back out. Send out the ghost. Let him go for another one. Yeah, point. Yeah, that's it. You can send him out for another one. Good job, buddy. As if he's in the holodeck or something. All right, and here he comes. The man, the myth, the legend. Brent Kopstels. Another Stanley Cup. He has Vezinas. He has Jennings. I didn't think he was going to be on this team for very long. And he may very well be out the door soon-ish with Cousineau coming up. But, wow, another backstop to a Stanley Cup. Ladies and gentlemen, it might be a glitched picture, but get your cameras out and snap one nonetheless. It'll last a lifetime. So we took down the Sabres in six, Islanders in five, Maple Leafs in seven before sweeping out the Calgary Flames in the Stanley Cup Finals. Hughes led scoring with 24 points in 22 games. Lane McLean, 22 points, uh, point per game pace. Our 18th overall selection 13 years ago. Probably the end of the line for him. Unless, I don't know, with the salary cap going up, line name may be retiring. Could be possible. Klesla, Hervinen, Sanderson, Roche, Line with 16 and 22. All the way down the list we go. And Brent Kopstel, 16, 4 and 2. I probably would have given him the con smite actually with a shutout. 924 save percentage, 2.32 goals against average. Really just puts a smile on your face. Goes down to an 81 overall. Makes a ton of sense. So another cup, another President's Trophy, all that good stuff. Not going to win any of those awards, but Damian Roche wins his first James Norris. That's awesome to see. Con Smythe does indeed go to Philip Hughes and not to the reincarnation of Seth Jones. And in 2037, Patrick Laine is still not done yet. As the player got drafted just before him, Austin Matthews retires with over 1,700 points in over 1,600 games. Other big names going out, top 50, Bo Horvat, etc. Rasmus Sandin, who played a good few seasons with us, 736 points in 1,342 games. He was a great second pair defenseman for us. Keandre Miller retiring, 628 points in 1,309 games. Also a great acquisition for us in the few seasons that he played. Fantastic plus minuses and all that good stuff. Five full seasons with Columbus. And the plus minus king, Ryan Lindgren, 324 points in 1,370 games. Goes out with a plus minus of plus 462. Look at all these pluses with Columbus. He, had, he spent a long, long time with us. From 2024 all the way until 2035, he was a huge fixture on this team and responsible for many, many uh, uh, good uh, President's Trophy winning season. And he has the Stanley Cup rings to show for it. Drew McIntyre, one of our creative players, retiring. He had a tough career. He was always in a backup role, despite being like an 85 overall in Calgary for a little while. Went 218, 222, and 44, and plus 25 shutouts, though. Heading into year number 18, Patrick Laine is still on board. Going to be a reduced role for sure. More cap jujitsu to do, and let's see how we're looking in uh, another cup defense season coming up. Unfortunately, our head coach retired once again. He had such a fantastic record, plus 70% winning percentage. So we'll need another new head coach. That will be done in the offseason. Year number 18, it was not an easy offseason as we did lose Lane McLean. He wanted 14 plus million and we just couldn't give it to him. We tried as hard as we could. It just didn't work out. First line with the new head coach, plus five for Klesla, Hughes, and Sanderson. Second line, Line A, age of 39, 82 overall. 
Hervinen going center and Stefan Helmer going left wing with the plus one. Third line, Crane, Pitkinen, and Pedestrom. Fourth line, Corey, Calvert, and Lapointe. Defense now, Roche and Lott still up there. Mackey, we got him re-signed to a one-year deal. Jacques Coutet, he is the 10th overall pick from Nashville. We got him in a trade last season, I believe, that I had swung for some prospects. He ended up growing very nicely. Ariel Alcock, he was the second round pick in 2035, medium lead potential. And Maloney still keeps re-signing on for these short deals, which is great to see. Goaltending, Copstos and Cousino are both 81 overall, so they will share the crease. In a season that has our stars aging and our depth diminishing a little bit, let's see what we can do in year number 18. No top of the NHL honors in year number 18, but we did have a record of 48-28-6, which was good enough for 5th best in the NHL. This was actually pretty impressive as we were about a 500 team until through the first third of the season, so a huge the second half especially. 3.5 goals, 4 per game, 2.76 against. The goal scoring definitely slowing down now. Power play 29.1% best in the NHL. Crazy how Vegas had the second best and they finished 30th. Penalty kill of 78.1. Not the worst, but once again, closer to the middle, which has not been where we want to be in recent years. Vaklav Klasa led the team in points. Only player who went above a point per game with 86 points for him. Hughes had 80. Sanderson, 9 goals and 61 assists. 70 points at the age of 34. Really slowing down in his goal scoring and just thinking about passing it out. Alf Peterstrom, 69 points from him. Roach, 65. Hervin in 61, definitely slowing down at 35 years of age now, 85 overall. Uh, Stefan Helmer, 58. Line A, 20 goals, 57 points at the age of 39 with AHL potential. He's still got it. Corey Crane, Maloney, all the way down the list here. And uh, plus 31 from Ariel Alcock. Uh, Goaltending, Copsels went 28, 15, and 5 with 5 shutouts, 9, 10 save percentage, 2.61 against. Nicolas Cousineau, 20, 15, and 1. Three shutouts for him, 907 and 2.81 goals against average. Pretty solid season from the goaltending, despite them not really being the high, both 81 overall. Odd to see them being the ones carrying when the scoring didn't really come through. It was a difficult playoffs as we went 6-6 six and six to lose in the second round to the Carolina Hurricanes, who would go on to sweep through the Senators and then take on the Ducks in 7. Crazy that the Ducks and the Jets seem to always make it in the Western Conference, but once again we lose to the eventual Stanley Cup champions. A heartbreaking exit, especially considering that Patrick Liney at the age of 40 was over a point per game with 16 points in 12 games, 80 overall. I'd be shocked if he didn't retire after this season, but what a show of just leadership, poise, and dominance from the 40-year-old vet. The rest of the points as may be seen there. Copstools was not bad in the playoffs. Actually, he didn't go in the playoffs. It was mostly Cousineau who had some struggles, 6, 4, and 2. Unfortunately, I can't micromanage every single thing. I've already been doing well over 20 hours in the simulation, so I couldn't micromanage the goaltending, and Cousineau got the start. Unfortunately, that may have been a bit of the downfall, but he's going to have to get used to it. He's going to be our starter of the future, and I hope he grows that elite potential because we signed him to a nice contract extension. Well, we could sign him to a nice contract extension, but if he's not showing us any potential, I don't know. I do not get it. I don't get it. Patrick Laine still not retiring. He wants one last chance. Alex Texier retires 875 points in 1,450 games. As well as Warfrzenko, one point shy of 500 points in just under 1,500 NHL games. And Mikey DiPietro, who got us a couple of cups, I believe, 371, 195, and 48. He retires with quite a nice career to show for it. So, hey, moving into 2038-39, year number 19, Patrick Laine wants more. Let's try and bolster up the scoring after a bit of a disappointing output, and we'll see what we look like at the beginning of next season. Year number 19, Klusla, Yudes, Sanderson, first line plus five. Sanderson now down to an 87, Yudes to an 88. They are starting to get up there in age. Second line, Helmer, Pedersstrom, and Yuka Hervinen at 82 overall. Third line, Crane, Pitkinen, and Patrick Laine, 40 years of age, 79 overall. This has to be the end of the Laine. And I've decided that when Laine retires, so will I. I'm going to let the computer manage the rest with like five, six seasons to go and need to upload this video before NHL 22 drops. And over the last three days, I've done nothing nothing but simulate. I need to get this done. Corey Leopold Ragnarsson on the fourth line. 
Ragnarsson signed in free agency. He'll be a top nine winger of the future. Good shooting categories. Roach, Lot. Lots, uh, Cote, Maloney, Fisse, and Alka. As our defense, Dominic Spacek, our new starting goaltender, 84 overall. He was a second round pick in 2035 and out of nowhere shot up to an 84 overall. So he's going to be our starter, backed up by Nicolas Cousineau. And unfortunately, I'm going to be trading away Brent Cospels just for picks because that'll free up the $5.775 million for next season when we'll have to be spending big in free agency to replace some of these names. And at 35 years of age, I know he still can get it done. I would rather play Cousineau than him since Cousineau still has minimally potential and is signed for eight years at $3.55 million. I thought he was going to be our starter of the future. Now it might be spot check. Let's see how they perform during the season, and we'll check back in at the end of year number 19. A nice return to normalcy in year number 19 as we finished third best in the NHL, better than any Western Conference team, going 50, 27, and 5. Exactly four goals, four per game, but almost exactly three goals against per game, so not ideal. Power play 32.7, best in the NHL. But once again, the penalty kill really struggling at 77.9. So I don't know if it's the coaches, I don't know if it's the lines, as I've just been letting go, I've been more best lines in it, maybe that's what the issue is. Klesla getting, now we have three players above a point per game, that's great to see. Klesla 96, Sanderson 90, 80 assists season, and Philip Eudes 88 points. Hervenen at the age of 36 and 82 overall still puts up 78 points. Damien Roche puts up 72, really nice to see him carrying. Petters from 63, Pitkinen, Helmer, all the way down the list here. Patrick Laine at the age of 40, closing in on 41, still gets a 50-point, 31-goal season at 78 overall. Crane, Lots, all the way down the list we go. Goaltending, Spotcheck in his first season goes 43, 21, and 4. Two shutouts, sub-900 save percentage, but 2.92 goals against average, up to an 87 overall. I will likely be moving on from Nicolas Cousineau. Funnily enough, I did not trade Kopstels because I could not find a trading partner. So maybe Cousineau leaves next season and Kopstels sticks around. I felt dirty pulling a Vegas and Marc-Andre Fleury on him, so thankfully, hey, he's still here. Klesla scores, and there it is, just seven seconds into overtime. After a couple of game sevens in round number two and three, having heart attacks in the simulation, we go to game five and win it at home. 41-year-old Patrick Laine, the captain, will raise the Stanley Cup one last time. Getting it done at home in year number 19. You just can't write this. Felipe Sanderson, look at that beard, the grizzled veteran. Winning the con Smythe is, let's see it, Philip Eudes. Yes, there it is. Very well deserved with 33 points in the playoffs. Look at that haircut. Look at the home fans, and here he comes. Patrick Laine. The end of the Laine. 41 years of age. Another Stanley Cup at home in front of the fans going and riding off into the sunset Patrick Laine captain of the Columbus Blue Jackets ah oh. so five games in round one but then seven games against the Islanders seven games against the Bruins who had swept through rounds one and two and an easy five games against the Calgary Flames. Maybe not easy, but nine and one in the last two Stanley Cup finals against Calgary now. Philip Eudes scored 33 points to get the Conn Smythe Trophy. Klesla, Helmer, Sanderson, all above a point per game. Pedersen at a point per game. Hervenen, 36 years of age, 23 points, up back up to an 86 overall. Patrick Laine, 41 years old, 76 overall, and he scores 11 goals and 18 points. This has to be the end of his career now. Roche, Pitkinen, Crane, everyone down the list here. Everyone contributing. Great plus minus from lots as well. Goaltending, like we said, it was Spotchak going 15, 4, and 3. One shutout. Not the greatest numbers, but good enough for a Stanley Cup. In the awards, it's Philip Eudes winning his first career Frank J. Selkie, a.k.a. the Ryan O'Reilly Award. It's very rare, I find, to have a player on your team who wins it. It's always O'Reilly or some other like two-way forward kind of guy who has high in overall. But Philip Eudes is a power forward. Great to see that. And, of course, we all knew it was coming. Patrick Laine with one more Stanley Cup says, that's it for me. 1,614 points, 745 goals in 1,861 games. 
minus his points and games with the uh, Winnipeg Jets at the beginning of his career. So maybe around 240 points just spitballing here. So that's still, you know, over 1,300 points with the Blue Jackets. We'll get in the record book. We'll see it in a moment. And well over 1,500 games played as well. In the playoffs, 324 games played, 131 goals, and 278 points. Minus the 17, minus the 24 games with Winnipeg. So 300 games played with the Columbus Blue Jackets in playoff fashion. So 262 points in 300 playoff games with the Columbus Blue Jackets. Patrick Laine, our captain, take a bow, my friend. Put his statue right next to Sam Reinhart's brothers in arms. I'm going to miss you, buddy. Also retiring this season, Adam Boquist, who had 952 points in over 1,500 games played. Much of his career being with us when we traded for him in the Seth Jones deal all the way from 2000 and wow, 2024-25 to 2036. Fantastic seasons along the way. The best years of his career. Many Norris trophies to show for it as well. Zach Jones retiring. He did not work out on our team. Michael Oliver, 500 points in 1,313 games. Great career for him. And another creative player retiring, Mikey LaForge. Over 1,000 games played. Goes 540, 377, and 86 with 66 shutouts and really nice career numbers. So at his retirement, Patrick Laine goes out with the most games played in franchise history, 1,556, as well as most seasons at 19. The other points, goals, assists, records being held by other players at the moment, but Patrick Laine, his impact on this franchise cannot be overstated. So as I said, with Laine now retiring, I'm going to put a few things more on auto, auto sign free agents, auto draft, stuff like that. This video is probably well over two hours at this point, and as I've said, it's over 20 hours of simulation. I gotta get this done, I gotta edit it, I gotta do it. ASAP with NHL 22 coming out, so please forgive me if we rush through the last few seasons just to see how Sanderson, Klesla, Hervinen, and Eudes end up doing. Year number 20. First line, Klesla, Eudes, and Sanderson, as always. They're getting up there in age, and to be honest, I'll probably end this once they retire, as opposed to just going to the end when there's players we don't even know anymore. Helmer, Pitkinen, Crane on the second line. We lost Hervinen, unfortunately, to free agency. He wanted in the $12, $13 million range. Ragnarsson, Callio, Fane, Ackerlin, Leopold, Bates. Defense, Ro Roche at a 90 overall now. Alcock at an 84. He was our second round pick in 2035. He signed to a big extension now. Lots, Fisse, Maloney, and Cote. Goalies, Spotcheck signed a two-year extension with us. He's backed up by the veteran, 36-year-old Brent Kopsels, who's still here. After his contract's gone next season, we'll have a bit more money to spend. Things are extremely tight. Year number 20, the boys are getting up there in age. I'm not sure what will come first, whether it's retirement or year number 25, but year number 20, let's hit it. Another top 10 finish in year number 20 as we finish 8th in the NHL with a record of 48, 30, and 4. Actually our lowest in a very, very, very long time, but still top 10 nonetheless. Almost 3.5 goals, 4 per game, close to 3 goals against per game. Power play of 23% was definitely a lot lower than usual. Uh, that's probably in part to just going best lines because computer doesn't know what it's doing. And penalty kill of 77.8 was in the middle, closer to the lower side. 87 point seasons from Philip Eudes and Stefan Helmer. Great to see that. 35 goals, 52 assists from the sixth round selection. Really love to see gems like that. Uh, over point per game, career highs in all those categories. Klesla, 38 goals and 81 points. Sanderson, 77 points. Pickenin, 71 as a uh, two way forward. Pretty surprising. Roche, Crane, Alcock, Ragnarsson, all the way down we go. Goaltending, Spacek went 38, 23, and 4 with four shutouts. Brent Kopstels, the veteran, 10, 7, and 0. I'm so glad we kept him as well, and he put up a very solid backup season. And in the postseason, the veteran boys get it done. From 8th in the NHL, no matter, because it's another Stanley Cup for your Columbus Blue Jackets. Kopstels, the veteran, getting another ring. All those top line guys getting another ring as well. I don't know how many rings I have at this point. Honestly, I've lost count, so i got to wait until the recap at the end of the video. But my goodness. Con Smythe honors going to, who's this? Dylan Roach. What? I don't know what I'm saying. Damian Roach. Congratulations, buddy. First time that we have a defenseman win the Con Smythe in our entire, uh, in all of our Stanley Cups. So none of the big three taking it. Damian Roach. 
What a guy. Nice. Our new captain, he's been here since all the way back in fourth overall in 2022. Felipe Sanderson, well-deserved captaincy for him. And for the first time with the C on his chest, in front of the fans that he's been in front of all of his career, he raises the Stanley Cup. Oh, Felipe, Felipe, Felipe. As usual, there's a seven-game thriller in round number two or three, and then it's a sweep in the Stanley Cup Finals as we took down Nashville in four games to capture the 2040 Stanley Cup. Big Damien with 25 points in 22 games, a very well-deserved con Smythe. Hughes, Klesla, both over point per game. Sanderson, 21, and down the list we go as usual for the goaltending spot check. How'd he do? 15, 5, and 1 with two shutouts. Great numbers from him as well. Kopstels did well when called upon for 25 shots and he made 24 saves. Another ring for Big Brent. Speaking of Damien, he also captures his second career, James Norris, as he now has two in the last four years. And in the 2040 retirement class, a few of our old friends, Jacob Perrault, he ended up scoring 795 points in 1,230 games. He had very solid seasons with Minnesota and Winnipeg after we had, and even Detroit, after we had to let him go when he was wanting eight, nine million. We couldn't keep him on anymore. Jaden Durpos as well, our first round pick in 2021, scored 618 points in 1,066 games. Many of those games being with us, but again, it came down to money. Always comes down to money, unfortunately. Alf Pedersstrom also retiring, 544 points in 820 games. A lot of those coming with us. And the last created player standing, Coconut Hobbs, the age of 40, retires with a record of 470, 393, and 80. Above 900 save percentage, letting in three goals against per game. As a six foot nine experiment, he did not have the greatest numbers, but hey, pretty solid career to show for it. Year number 21, the boys are back. Klusla, Yudes, Sanderson at the age of 36, 84 overall. He's still ready to keep on kicking. Helmer up to an 89 overall. Love it, love it, love it from this former sixth round pick. First liner of the future once Sanderson continues to drop. He's centered by Pitkinen and Rodion Amirov, 38 years of age. The computer signed him to a two-year deal. Ragnarsson, Kaleo, Fane, more names at the bottom. Even Yuri Nazarov, the grinder, fourth overall pick in 2021. The computer signed him to a one-year deal. Uh, defense, Roche, Alcock, Fisset, Coté, Rivet, Olver. Really a lot of names we don't know anymore. But spot check up to an 89 overall, our starting goalie, backed up by Brent Kopstels, who signed a one-year league minimum to just stick around for possibly one last season. What an absolute tank he is. Let's try and run it back once again. I don't know how the, the, the these old men get it done, but year number 21, let's hit it. Somehow in year number 21, it was one of the best seasons in franchise history as we once again get back to our President's Trophy winning ways and go 64, 15, and 3. It wasn't as much as the goals for, although that was amazing, but the goals against, only 2.41 per game. Spotcheck went just on a, on a tear. Power play down to only 22.5%. First time in an extremely long time that we're not in the top three for that. And penalty kill, only at 78.9, so the special team's floundering a little bit. But that doesn't matter too much when you have a 104-point season from Felipe Sanderson. 81 overall. 81 overall. And he puts up 104 points. One of the best seasons of his career. Philip Eudes, 48 goals, 95 points. Klesla, also 95 points. Helmer, 75. Amirov in his first season, 73. And down the list we but go. Really, as I said, the goaltending. Spotcheck went 57. New franchise record in wins. 12 and 2 with 10 shutouts. Easily a Vezina season. 914 save percentage. 2.38 goals against average. Brent Kopstel's backing him up. Just great, great leadership and guidance for him. 7 3 and 1 was his record. And really nice numbers to boot. Spotcheck, unfortunately, in need of an extension after this season, so that'll be difficult. And in the postseason, we go back to back once again, defeating our rivals, the Chicago Blackhawks, in five games. The game-winning goal in game number five, going to Amirov with two minutes left in the third period to put us up seven to six, add an empty netter, and it's another Stanley Cup for the Blue Jackets. Kopstel's there, another ring for Kopstel's, another ring for all those boys up in that first line. Hasn't changed in years. Uh, Nazarov, Amirov, the pieces that came in. Uh, our good friend, Greg Bulbrook, was between the pipes for the uh, Blackhawks. We had to get through him, unfortunately, but we gave him his ring or two. And winning the Conn Smythe was Philip Eudes, 10 goals and 21 assists for 31 points with an A on his chest. That top line, call him the leadership line, I don't know what. Captain Sanderson with the alternates, Klesla and Eudes. 
And once again, in front of the home fans, Gary calls Felipe Sanderson over to raise the Stanley Cup as captain. So many rings, I can't, I've lost count, like I said, but raises one more over his head. He's gotten used to it. A Hall of Fame career for Sanderson. Not too tough of a trip to the Stanley Cup Finals this year as we took down the Rangers in six, Caps in five, Sens in six, and then won the Stanley Cup in five games against Chicago. And Damian Roche winning back-to-back -back James Norris trophies, the third of his career and third in the last five years. Vezina going to spot check, very well deserved, as well as the Jennings and no other awards. Amirov going out on top with Columbus as he goes one and done with us. 1,464 points in over 1,500 games. Goes out with a bang. Also retiring is Lane McLean, our first round pick back in 2024. Great career from him, 1,019 points in 1,148 games. Matthew Boldy retiring, he played a good few seasons with us as well. But headlining the class of goaltenders in 2041, Brent Copstals, Copstals, never figured out how to say it. 544 games played. He was a late bloomer. 372 wins, 119 losses, 29 overtime losses, 30 shutouts in 372 wins in 544 games. Crazy winning percentage, 904 save percentage, 2.67 goals against average, 14 assists to boot. What a career for him. All the way back in 2022, we drafted him and he retires a lifer with the Blue Jackets. His playoff numbers, nothing to sneeze at. 84, 34, and 12. Eight shutouts, 908 save percentage, 2.74 goals against average, and more Stanley Cup rings than I think he thought he was going to get when he got drafted by Columbus back in the fourth round of 2022. Wishing him all the best in a very well-deserved retirement. Year number 22, Klesla, Eudes, Sanderson, plus five in that first line. Sanderson still got it. Second line, Pitkin and Helm are probably the only recognizable names as the rest of the team is just a bunch of randos nowadays. Defense, Roche, Alcock, who's been having fantastic growth. That second round pick, offensive defenseman, now at an 89 overall. Love to see it. And we've got him signed for three more years. Cote, Fisa, and Randos. Goaltending, it is Dominic Spachek, now at a 90 overall, backed up by Paul McClellan, who was a fifth round pick of ours in 2035. We're getting up there in age, but it doesn't look like that means anything in the last few seasons. So year number 22, here we go. Another twisted season in Columbus as we win another President's Trophy, going 63, 15, and 4. 4.28 goals, 4 per game, 2.66 against. Power play of 32% was second best in the NHL. Penalty kill of 77.8. Closer to the top than the bottom, but more around the middle. And hey, remember that like 110 point franchise record? Yeah, Philip Bude scores 126 points in 2041-42. New franchise record for points, I think for goals as well. 58 goal season for him. No, 62 is the record. So just a new record of points. Just a new record of points. 126 from the 35-year-old. Klesla, 105 with 55 goals. Felipe Sanderson, new franchise record in assists. The man is just aging like a fine wine. 93 assists and 104 points. I don't get it, man. Helmer, 78. Pitkin, 62. And down the list we go with a lot of names that unfortunately we don't recognize anymore. Goaltending, Spotcheck, 56, 12, and 3 with three shutouts. Great numbers, good backup. Let's hit So of it. course it's only fitting that after a season like that, we lose in seven games of round number one to the Philadelphia Flyers, who went on to lose to the Islanders, who went on to lose to the Edmonton Oilers in the Stanley Cup Finals. In the playoffs, Sanderson scored eight points, huge point per game. Not bad in the point production, but definitely needed a lot more from a lot of the guys. Unfortunately, Philadelphia just shut us down. That makes no sense. But spot check, yeah, sub 900 save percentage. All makes sense of the Vezina Trophy winning. The, the Vezina caliber goalie collapses, whatever. Classic. More President's Trophy honors for us. Individual awards. Philip Hughes, another Hart Memorial Trophy. It's been a little while, but he's back. Any other awards here? Spotcheck winning the Vezina and the William M. Jennings. Back-to-back -back seasons for him doing so. Uh, wow, look at Miss Frizzle winning the Jack Adams. Great for her. And Philip Hughes once again winning the Ted Lindsay as well. Unfortunately, some big changes headed into year number 23 as Felipe Sanderson leaves the free agency. The guy has bottom six potential, mid-80 overall. He wanted $18 million. We barely had a $4 million to sign this guy Thornton for the second line. So, unfortunately, it'll be Klesla, Eudes, and now Helmer on the first line. 
and then really tough uh, middle six and fourth line yeah this is a bit of a brutal lineup because the money in the future the that it doesn't balance with the inflation it's it's not right so we have a, we're running a negative two on the third d pair as well it's it's not good news <laughs> anyways goaltending we got spot check re-signed which is the key thing seven years at just shy of 11 million dollars mcclellan up to an 83 as well so I anticipate this being a pretty tough season, actually, without Sanderson in the lineup and n having really not any depth. It's Utes and Klesla leading the way. And with all the cups and everything already achieved, the video now is pretty much just figuring out how Klesla, Utes, and Sanderson's careers end off. So, you're number 23. Actually, my bad, I hadn't noticed that Jack Fain was still an unsigned RFA, so this is how the lineup will look. Bit better to have an 84 overall in that second line. Helps the depth a little bit, but still curious to see how this season will pan out. I don't get it. Even when we don't have a crazy, crazy good season, 50 wins, good enough for the President's Trophy once again. 110 points, 50, 22, and 10 the record, almost 3.5 goals for, over 2.5 goals against. 25.7% on the power play, one of the better ones. Pony kill at 83%. Nice to see a little bit of an increase there as we are in the top five. Philip Eudes, 89 points in 82 games at the age of 36. Vaclav Klasel, another 40 goal season. Very consistent as always. Helmer moving into more of the playmaker role without Felipe Sanderson around. 56 assists and 77 points. Alcock, 64 points. Pitkin and Thornton and all those other guys down the way. Goaltender Spachek went 43-19-8. Four shutouts, 913 save percentage, and just over two and a half goals against per game. And in the Stanley Cup Finals, it takes us six games, but we once again defeat our rivals, the Chicago Blackhawks, to capture yet another Stanley Cup. Yet another Conn Smythe to Philip Eudes as he ended up scoring seven goals and 22 assists for 29 points on our way to another Stanley Cup. Add that to the trophy cabinet. And after all these years, for the first time as captain, the Dome, Baklav Klesla Klutchla, gets called over to receive the Stanley Cup as captain of the dynastic Columbus Blue Jackets. He raises it as captain, and we are once again Stanley Cup champions. In the playoffs, it wasn't too tough of a run as we swept through the Caps, then beat the Rangers in five, beat the Flyers in five, and took down the Hawks in six for the Stanley Cup championship. Both Helmer and Eudes had 29 points in 20 games, but as we saw, Eudes got the con Smythe. 15 goals and 28 points for Vaclav Klesla. Thornton was a great pickup. Alcock, great offensive defenseman. Many players at around a point per game or more. And spot check between the pipes went 16 3 and 1. 907 save percentage, 2.68 goals against average. And after that one last Stanley Cup, Philip Eudes, at the age of 37 only, still an 86 overall, calls it a career. 890 goals, 1,830 points in 1,554 games. The second overall pick in 2024 had an amazing career with us. A plus 810, almost 1,000 penalty minutes, was 16.1% in his shooting, had 450 power play points, 68 shorthanded points, played, took over 25,000, uh, sorry, over 46,000 face-offs, 3,000 hits, what a guy, 1,686 takeaways. Looking just at his playoff stats as well, with all those Stanley Cup rings, he had a lot of games, 349 playoff games, 379 playoff points, a plus 164. Put his statue next to Reinhardt and Line and probably Kopstels as well. Yuka Hervinen also retiring, the first overall pick by the Rangers back in the day. He went to Carolina, then went to New Jersey, but the bulk of his career spent here in Columbus. 806 goals, 1,513 points in 1,634 games. Minus these first two, the first two and last two seasons of his career, and look at all these 60, 90, 100 plus point seasons that he had. In the playoffs, he just had 13 games with Carolina, so minus those and minus a bit with the Rangers, but 304 playoff games, 130 goals, 274 points. At the age of 40, what a career for Yuka Hervin in the first overall pick all the way back in 2021. Year number 24, we got the band back together. Felipe Sanderson, 80 overall, 39 years of age. We got him from Pittsburgh on an extremely expensive contract, but we had to go one last ride with him. 
Klaus at the age of 37 with Dimitri Habibulin. Computer signed him in free agency, former first round, first overall pick from Ottawa in 2026. Huge new piece for us on that first line with Helmer. Second line also got Weston Quincy, sixth overall pick in 2029. So great signings from the from the uh, AI GM. Now we moved into the president of hockey operations role. Third line looks pretty good. Fourth line looks pretty good. I added some two-way guys because the computer wanted to run with low 70 overall players on the fourth line. Roche, Alcock, Hendry, blah, blah, blah. Those are the overalls. Spot check at a 91, black, backed up by now uh, 83 overall Paul McLennan. So with our last chance to do something here in 2043-44 with Sanderson in the lineup, most likely him and Klesla back at it again. Brothers in arms, let's do it. Another 60-win President's Trophy season in year number 24. 60, 16, and 6 was the record. 4.23 goals, 4 per game, 2.66 against. Power play back to getting in the top 2, 3 consistently, 30.3%. Penalty kill at 84.3, best in the NHL. What a season. I just can't believe these numbers. Felipe Sanderson, the guy's 40 years old. 40 years old, AHL top 6 potential. He gets an assist a game. 93 points. Quincy, 65 goals, 103 points. New franchise record for goals for, I believe, in a season. Happy Bullen, 95 points. Helmer, 89. Klesla, point per game at 82 points, 37 years of age. He's dropped to 82 overall, top 9 potential now. Alcock went point per game as well. And down the list we go. Goaltending, Spotcheck leading the way. 51, 14, and 5. Five shutouts. 906 save percentage, 2.59 goals against. McClellan continues to be a great backup, but I'm sure he wants to be a starter of his own. And we're committed to spot check moving forward, so we'll probably have to move on from him. But in the playoffs, despite beating the Penguins in five games, we ourselves drop in five to the New Jersey Devils, who then drop in five to the Lightning, who drop in six to the LA Kings. Does it make a lot of sense? No, but that's not really a surprise. Felipe Sanderson, point per game plus in the playoffs. What's this guy doing? What's he eating? Get me on his workout plan. Insane. The whole team, pretty good in the scoring. Uh, Goaltending, how is it? Spot check. Spot check did okay. Maybe he faltered a little bit. He has 88 poise. Bah, hard to tell. Another President's Trophy there, now four in a row. Looking at the awards here, Alcock won the James Norris, his first. Very nice to see that. Spotcheck winning his fourth Vezina in a row. Spotcheck winning his fourth Vezina and Jennings in a row. And Quincy winning the Morris Rocket Richard. So great year for hardware. Crazy about Spotcheck especially. And will this be our last season with the franchise if Sanderson and Klesla decide to call it a career? And yes, they do. We are calling it a career in 2044. After 24 seasons, GM Data is hanging it up in Columbus because his boys are all, no, all now out of the house. They flew the coop. Felipe Sanderson, the man drafted fourth overall in 2022, ends his career with 1,907 points, 1,553 assists, 354 goals, 1,756 games. Vaklav Klesla, the first overall pick in 2024, goes out playing 1,640 games. He scores 862 goals, 1,031 assists, 1,893 points. We'll check the all-time record books after to see where everyone sits in the year 2044, but suffice to say that they are definitely two of the greatest players in NHL history. Felipe Sanderson also put up 294 assists and 378 points in 339 playoff games, all of them being with us. He did have the one season with Pittsburgh, meaning take into account his stats, and all of Klesla's games coming with us when it comes to his playoff numbers. 359 games played, 192 goals, and 410 points. Between these two guys, as well as Udes, we have well over a dozen, two dozen even cups. I don't even know. It's crazy how well these guys simulated how pro prolific they were with their careers so impressed and man 
really a great way to end off the this these 24 years so wrapping this all up now with the franchise records Vaclav Klesla most points all time with 1893 Felipe Sanderson most seasons played at 20 I'm sure that's tied to some other guys though most assists Sanderson 1406 Klesla most games played at 1640 Damian Roche with almost 2,000 penalty minutes most all time. Bobrovsky still has the record for shutouts at 33, but Spotcheck not far behind. Kopsel's most wins at 332, and Yude's most goals at 890. Single season records, Quincy set the goals at 65, Yude's the points at 126, Felipe Sanderson the assists at 93, and Kopsel's the wins at 52. Crazy to think that those uh, the big ones, goals, assists, and points, all set in the year 2042 or 44, near the end of the franchise. Also note that Spotcheck tied Steve Mason's record of 10 shutouts in a single season. Rookie records, Klesla most assists and most goals and most points. Spotcheck most wins at 38, but Klesla's records from 2025 still standing. Single game records, Sanderson six assists in one game, Klesla seven points in one game, Hervinen five goals in one game. Bobrovsky's 52 save night in 2014 still stands. Checking the all-time records now in 2044, Rasmus Dahlin, 1,863 games played, holds the NHL record for most games. This goalie games played is glitch, don't pay any attention to that. Goals, Alex Ovechkin goes out with 977. Stamkos behind him, Kane, Matthews, and then Wayne Gretzky. So Matthews won more than Gretzky. Most points all time, Felipe Sanderson goes out number three, and Vaclav Klesla number four. For all the simulated, for all the generated prospects that we had and everything like that, I'm surprised there aren't more up here, but so crazy to see that Sanderson three and Klesla four. If he had stayed with us instead of going to Pittsburgh that one year, he could have gotten to number two all time. Wow, 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 wow. Most assists in NHL history, Sanderson at two and Klesla at three again. No one getting quite close enough to Wayne, but two and three, we can settle for that. Most wins all time, Marc-Andre Fleury got into number three in the end. Shutouts, nothing changed there. Most 50 goal seasons, Javi Bulin got in there with nine, a few players tied at nine, and 100 point seasons. Philip Hughes tied for third all time with eight 100 point seasons. So that is a wrap on the Columbus Blue Jackets and NHL 21, my friends. I'm going to go through a few graphics here at the end of this video on your screen here. As you can see, our con smites between the year 2028 and the year 2043, we won 10 Stanley Cups, two con smites for Klesla, one con smite for Line, one for Lane McLean, one for Damian Roche, and five of the 10 going to our first line center, Philip Hughes. Moving to the other awards that were won between... Moving to the other awards that were won in our 24 seasons between 2020 and 2044. Three Calder trophies, two Jack Adams for Pablo Prust, only one Selkie going to Philip Hughes, Vezina is going to Di Pietro, Kopstels, Bulbrick, another one to Kopstels, so two for him, and two for Spacek. The Jennings, lots for Kopstels there, as Di Pietro and Saros shared it twice. Kopsels shared it once and won it solo three more times. One for Bulbrick and two for Spacek. Feel free to pause and read more if you're interested. And the big awards now. Hart Memorial Trophy, 2028, Hughes won the first. Sam Reinhardt, our captain, won the lone piece of hardware in 2029. Two from Klesla and then four for Hughes between 2034 and 2042. Same exact thing goes for the Ted Lindsay. Art Ross leading the NHL in points. Philip Hughes did it three times, and Klesla did it once. Norris trophies, we had a lot of success with our defensemen. It went Boquist, Hannafin, Hannafin, Boquist, Boquist, Hannafin, then Keandre Miller, Damian Roche for three more, and Alcock with one of his own to end it off in 2044. Rock and Richard, we won it twice, Hughes in 2034, and Quincy in our last season, 2044. Coming now to the final screen, our record in the regular season as GM and company of the Columbus Blue Jackets, 1,301 wins, 552 losses, and 114 overtime or shootout losses. We won 13 President's Trophies in 24 years. Our longest consecutive streak was four in a row. We won 10 Stanley Cups in those 24 seasons, and we had two three-peats in those 10 Stanley Cup championships. Our best regular season, a few 
two 63-win seasons, but only one 64-win season in 2040-41 when we went 64 15 and 3. So that is it for the Blue Jackets, my friends. An extremely long video, I know. I hope you skimmed through it. I hope you enjoyed the run. Tons and tons and tons of time for me. Sleepless nights getting this out. So if you enjoyed it, hey, leave a like. Leave a comment with what part of the franchise surprised you the most. What was your favorite part of the 24 seasons? You can do that here on YouTube or over in the Discord server. Link in the description. Get ready for NHL 22, my friends. Episode 1 of our Seattle Kraken franchise mode series starting in just a few days i need to just take a quick little break here after non-stop simulation and commentary for three to four days sleepless nights literally burning the post midnight oil be sure to subscribe as well for everything nhl 22 franchise mode as i mentioned but also how to guides on line chemistry scouting and more coming your way so be sure to be subscribed so you do not miss any of those and have the most fun as possible in your franchise mode again another pitch for the discord server we're not just talking about data 782 videos we're talking sports fantasy sports life world and most of all franchise mode discussions so if you ever need help questions or just want to see more that is the place to be we didn't bother doing a 25th season since there was no one really left on the team that we started with when we moved into year number seven so i thought i would stop it there at year number 24 thank you for watching along i hope you enjoyed this series and all of our other series here on nhl 21 it's been a big you know year of growth for the channel as well and I'm very much looking forward to everything that NHL 22 has to offer. And I would love for you to be a part of the team and community that we are growing here. So thank you so, so very much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you all in NHL 22.